Do you think that um do you think that you can do magic by America is a popular enough song that people will know the title if I use it for chapter two of Moxie? Um, I don't think I know the song or the band. Oh, that's good. You should you should listen to the album A View from the Ground by America. It's a good album. Okay. Episode. But but the ch- chapter three is going to be bizarre love triangle. So if people didn't figure out the naming convention of the chapter names until then, they will at that point. <laughs> no. Episode three sixty four. Yes. Home of the Mario sixty four. <laughs> every copy, every every episode of the Career Suicide podcast is personalized. <laughs> You see that fucking post? Somebody, why do you hold on? Wait, I did that on why purpose. Say, okay, I was gonna say, why is it that when you inhale, you sound like one of those wood instruments that they give the one retarded kid in band, where you like rub a stick against like a, a ribbed dildo? But that's the one I always had. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! What was uh, that called? Beyond, Beyonce set to release new visual album "Black Is King" on Disney Plus. <laughs> Black is king? Yes. Hmm. All right. But whose phone? I don't know. I don't know what a visual album is. It's pro. Uh, who cares? Who, have, who cares? <laughs> is Michael Jackson's Moonwalker a visual album? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So it's so it's a music video. It's it's a a rock opera. I don't know. I don't know. It's quadrophenia. Uh, it's pedophilia. What was I just about to say? Fuck. Oh, yeah. I love the post that someone made. Speaking of uh, every copy of Mario 64 is personalized, where, like, it just said, reject modernity, and it was the Wario apparition, and it says, return to tradition, and it's Sonic.exe. <laughs> I said that. This is just what the show is now. It's just us telling everybody what our favorite memes are. Yeah. Well, I mean, hasn't it always been that? I mean, yes, but especially now. <laughs> okay. I said, I, I was on a call with Kate for a Let's Play, and I said something, reject reject modernity but i don't remember why <laughs> i said that when people were saying the ps5 was gonna fucking um yellow like the super nintendo <laughs> oh yeah yeah uh christina, I, I christina I like... figured out that that chad's warden or whatever his name was that the, the sony modeled the ps5 after him because it was pop collar <laughs> did you see like less than a year ago he was in a news report somewhere no, I mean, like, maybe I did. But... I, I don't remember what the news report was for, but everyone was like, oh my God, it's fucking Chad Ward. <laughs> Holy shit. It it's like, like when it. people go to the neighborhood and find the picture that's the background of, you know, I had to do it to him. <laughs> like, oh my God, that's real. Look like a deal, though. A P ish yeah. ripple. <laughs> I mean, he was right. right. He was right. Yeah, I mean, you spent facts. He was fighting, as the he was fighting a losing battle back in 2007 because the PS3 didn't have any he, games. Yeah, but now we see, we see that he was proven right in the long run. I like. I don't know. PS3 actually had a lot of good games by the end of its life cycle. It just didn't have any for the first four. No, so. I mean that, that's most new systems, I think. But yeah, it had nothing for like a couple of years. Yeah, nothing I'd want, but I could say. But I mean, like, hey, it had it had more games I wanted than the 360. Fuck the 360. Well, I mean, I don't know. It just we we really started losing exclusives. That's why in that generation, because like all the all the exclusives, all the all the second and third party shit that um, Sony would put out just became brown in the <laughs> PS3 generation, where it's like Naughty Dog moved on to Uncharted. Uh, I mean, there was a Ratchet and Clank trilogy for PS3, but like th- those guys moved on to Resistance, Fall of Man, and then uh, Sucker Punch did Infamous. So it was just like, here's your gray, brown, gritty, fucking stupid bald guy simulator. Here you go. The 360 had a couple of like RPGs, and then na- and like now that I care about shmups, I might have wanted to play them, but not. But back then, I didn't care. And I, the 360 I don't... had Blue Dragon. Yeah. The only reason of which you should play is to hear the best boss fight song in the history of RPGs. Oh, really? Dude, it's a Japanese guy trying so hard to sound like he's uh, Deep Purple. Cool. Well, send him up here. Wall, just hoping his guy walks by. Yeah. Guess who? It's the boy. It's the boy. 
The little boy? The little boy, yeah. Look how happy. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting there at the door, and he just stared at the wall, and I was like, he's waiting for this guy to walk by. He's in there. Let me go put him up. Do you want your door open? No, I was going to close that, but I'm recording, so. I'm closing. <laughs> I was bringing the boy, because he was waiting for you. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't close it all the way. I'll never get it open again. <laughs> I have to use the pointer on that, yeah, because these fucking morons. Every fucking door in our house. Are you doing podcast? Yes. But has it swelled up? It, it has swollen up, yeah. Because I love you too. Because sometimes in the in the winter, I love um, you, Corey. <laughs> Matt yelled, "I love you too." What? Matt yelled, "He loves you too." <laughs> uh, sometimes in the <laughs> you fucking son of a bitch, I'll kill you. Um, <laughs> sometimes in the winter, I have these like two little. So I'm in the attic, and like it's shaped like the roof, like yeah, yeah, yeah. The point at the top. So yeah, I've been in I've been in houses like, before, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have those little <laughs> tiny like Narnia doors that fucking. Um, <laughs> we have the little Coraline doors up here that lead yeah. to like sections of the roof that don't have the room in it. Yeah. And um, in the summer, the wood swells up, so I, like if if you even touch the door to the frame, it's like really hard to get open. I've almost ripped off the handle. <laughs> But in the, oh, but in the, yeah. So I have to like crawl in through the other door, crawl through the crawl space, and then kick it open with my feet. But then the in the winter, you can close it fully, and the wood is so shrunken that sometimes the magnet won't even hold, and it'll just open oh, randomly. Yeah. Wow. I wonder like, what kind of like wood they pressure. used. Like, cause that's that seems really. No, bad. I mean they, this was just in here when we moved in, and uh, we we recently this week we redid all the fucking doors in the upstairs because these fucking retards put every single door in wrong. Like oh. the attic door was the only one that closed correctly. All the other doors you had to like really force in. Oh man. They put one of those stupid hanging towel rack things on top of the bathroom door so it warped over time. Oh so yeah. Could... Yeah. So we redid that. We had to get like a planer and her dad came over and helped us and everything. Oh wow. Uh, it was a nightmare, but we did it. So <laughs> That's good though. It's good I mean, to have it, a home that you own. It's it's good to find out that when I work with my girlfriend, we don't agree on anything and we yell at each other a lot, but it's okay. <laughs> but you get it done though. We got it done. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, what the fuck were we saying? Did before? I tell you? Did I tell you that I locked myself out of the house a couple weeks ago? Well, yeah, yeah. You. That's the one you posted the Lance Hendrickson and Pumpkinhead picture. Oh, okay, okay. I couldn't remember if I had told tell you. me the story because I don't think you ever elaborated on it. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I wasn't. I didn't think I said it on the show. No, what happened was I was taking. I wanted to bring the car into the garage because it had been so hot and my AC doesn't work. And, uh, and this was Thursday because Friday I was going to, I had to take the cats to the vet. So I was like, I don't like, I've been in the car where it's been too hot in the car and Kitty will pant like a dog. So I yeah. was like, let me keep it in the garage. So I, out of habit, I, there's, you know, there's, there's a door between the hallway and the garage. So out of habit, I always lock it. So I must have locked it and then closed it behind me because I had this weird feeling like, well, the door upstairs is closed. But if for some go ungodly reason the cats get through, I don't want to end up running them over as I come into the garage. Yeah, yeah. I had one of those like anxiety thoughts. And yeah. then as I closed the door, I, I thought to myself, it'd be funny if I locked this door, turn the knob. I locked the store. I locked myself out of the house. You're not really a fucking adult unless you've locked yourself out at least once. That's what the guy said <laughs> when he finally came. But so it happened. So I was like, oh, oh he came. Oh, he came all over me. Yeah. So so Christina was not home. She had just left for work about an hour before. This was like at 730. So now I'm already thinking like, well, I locked myself out of the house. I don't have my cell phone. I don't have any you know, I have keys, obviously, just the key to the car because I, I wanted to drive it into the garage. And I hadn't taken in the garbage cans yet either. So now, and now I'm now I'm like already distracted, and I then I back the car into the into the garbage cans. <laughs> so I'm like I'm like smashing up everything, and then the neighbors see me do it, and I'm looking at them. You're just having a real tard. Uh, yeah, I was uh, having a tard out, and the, the neighbors saw me, and he goes, "Oh, they just jumped right out in front of you, huh?" I'm like, "Yeah," and I locked myself out of my house, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh," and I said, "Well, maybe the office is still open. I'll go walk over there." So I, you know, I drive the car in the garage, bring the cans back in they, they were out having a walk yeah. so i start walking up that way and they're walking towards me and they're like you know like the, the office isn't open you should just you know you should we can we can call emergency maintenance for you i'm like oh yeah yeah i forgot about emergency maintenance so they call 
and he hands me the phone because and I accidentally put up to my face. <laughs> He's in uh. and I and I and they had on speakers and I felt really stupid. And then the person that so emerged, now you're gonna die. Now I'm gonna die. This was like weeks ago. And then uh. the uh, emergency. Well, that's how long it takes. Yeah, you're right. The emergency maintenance guy says, oh, "Do you have ID?" And I'm like, "Oh." I locked myself out. <laughs> He's like, oh, no, it's okay. I, I realized what he meant way after, like, once he gets the door open, can I prove that I live there? <laughs> <laughs> so you just show him your Aetna figurine, and that guy's like, yeah, he totally lives there. Oh, yeah, that's, yep, exactly. No, but when he came, he was like, I told him what happened, and he was like, I, I think I do that once a week. My wife will tell you. And then, like, apparently his wife was also in the car, and I looked, I looked and I waved at her. <laughs> God. But, yeah, that was like, I mean, they had come... I was really only locked out of the house. Uh, <laughs> I was only locked out of the house for like maybe forty-five minutes. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, everyone's I, everyone's done. I locked myself out of the apartment a couple months before we moved, and uh, Corey ended up just taking a half day and driving home and opening it up. Because of course it started raining after that happened. Oh jeez. Well, I was like, at least I had the garage door open, so I, I decided to just sweep the garage out. I was like, well, let me at least get something done. Yeah. So I, I closed the garage door and I let the car run. <laughs> Pumped a lot of carbon monoxide in there. It was great. <laughs> uh, uh, what were we talking about? Well, I don't know if we were talking about anything, really. <laughs> were we? I don't think so. I don't know. This is a good show. <laughs> it's a great show. I've watched a few things that I like. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I played I play a few games that I like. I watched a few things. I don't I actually didn't watch anything, I don't think. I don't know. I, I, did I tell you I watched that Mortal Kombat movie? I don't, you didn't talk about it, though. It's good. It's totally fine. As someone who's not super into the lore, it was fine. Um, like, it was a fun watch. But, of course, I texted Alex about it, and he's like, yeah, they, they did too many retcons for my taste. And I'm like, what? You mean everything involving Quan Chi? Because, like, Quan Chi's in that movie, and it's like, but it's like a retelling of the Mortal Kombat 1 tournament. So, like, oh, it, there's just a bunch of shit where, like, Quan Chi just shouldn't be involved, and he is. <laughs> I mean, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I, I kind of hated how they gave more Sakuga moments to uh, Sonya Blade's fight against Reptile than the actual final battle of Sub-Zero versus Scorpion or Scorpion versus Quan Chi or whatever. What's, what's a Sakuga moment? Like when they animate stuff really good. Do you oh. not follow random Sakuga on Twitter where they just post like super hype fucking anime moments? No, but you, you explained that to me before. I just forgot because, you know. Yeah. My brain only has so much space for useless knowledge. There, there was some good ass Sakuga moments in her in her fight with Reptile, where she does the fucking leg grab thing, mm -hmm. where she like does a handstand and then grabs him with her legs and then just fucking breaks his spine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't realize it until I saw the credits. I'm like, why do I recognize Johnny Cage's voice? Uh, Johnny Cage in that movie is voiced by uh, Joel McHale. Oh. <laughs> So thank God it's voiced by the same uh, ethnicity. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh God, are we doing that? Problem. Are we doing that? <laughs> I, I'm like not mad about it so much anymore. But I mean, I wasn't even really that mad about it at the time either. I was just more disappointed because yeah. of Phil Lamar's it's comment. Extremely, well, it's extremely stupid. And then someone shared the thing from uh, Brain Dump or whatever uh, Hot Diggity Demons like series is where he was talking about a poo. And yeah. It's just basically like voice acting is the only thing in the acting subset where you, you, your ethnicity and all this other shit doesn't fucking matter. And if you if you don't worry about that shit when you do voice acting, then you're creating more career opportunities for literally everybody. And that's not exactly a bad thing, except for um, if you're black. Yeah, well, yeah, if you're if you're a white guy voicing a black guy, it's bad. But if you're a black guy voicing an Asian guy, or if you're a black woman voicing a Incan sorceress, then it's fine. I think it's funny because this conversation comes up all the time, but since everyone's home and not yeah, doing yeah. anything. That's really, that's really what, the, this is just the apex of everyone's bored at home because yeah. quarantine is just kind of stopping. Yeah, and no one wants to get, and Christina was like, it's because these people don't want to get fucking canceled. They'd rather just take the, what do they call it, what do the kids say, take the L? Take the L, yeah. And then just, you know, just lose you know, lose. I'm sure that guy who was hell. You know, I didn't even fucking know anybody who was voicing Cleveland Brown. That wasn't Seth MacFarlane. I just assumed Seth MacFarlane did everyone's voice. <laughs> so, um, I think it's the same guy who voices the. Oh no, I think it's that guy. Well, in any case, I'm sure. I'm sure he, he's think. he's been doing Cleveland Brown for 20 years. So, I mean, I'm sure he's right. either got another job already from Seth MacFarlane that he could voice and keep the same salary, or he's just going to move on because he's been doing the same character for 20 years. He's not taking a stance. The guy's a faggot. 
Well, someone someone shared a great 4chan post that like hits the nail on the fucking head where they shared the the Twitter post of the guy saying he was stepping down and so, the first comment was like, I'm glad this show full of rape jokes, atheist jokes, religious jokes, all this other pedophile jokes, all this other shit is uh, going to get a black voice actor to voice uh, this black character who's the token black in his own spinoff show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Plus, I mean, it's the most... If you say a character doesn't sound black, you, you, that's probably the most racist thing I think you could say. Because what is black? Well, did you hear what happened with the, the buddy chick from My Hero Academia with the dub? I did, but tell it. Uh, people people were saying black should sound black, which, one, that character's not black. Two, uh, they were saying that shit when the dub came out, and it turns out the chick who voiced her was black. Yeah, so. I mean, that's that's got to be the most, that's one of the most racist statements I think you can make. If when you say a person doesn't sound their color, their skin tone. Yeah, well, when you said that's that's a racist thing to say on Twitter, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. You didn't think that? You didn't think of that before? I, I totally thought that, but you oh. saying it as bluntly as that, I was like, yeah, he's right. Yeah, because, <laughs> I mean, and I, you know, it's just... Because, I, I mean, I, I grew up... Not grew up, but, I mean, like, I remember thinking that, like, years... I mean, a decade ago, at least. Because, you know, I was... Because I was thinking about it, and I'm like... You know why? Because because of shows like... <laughs> this is stupid. But because of shows like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, where they would have episodes where, you know, the, the, he, he, you know Will Smith was black right the yeah. character i mean i'm, I'm doing yeah. i'm doing air quotes just for, so people know but then the other the other characters are african-american but they're not black right i mean they had episodes like that where the other other people who are black at you know african-american would say you're not really black you're rich you know all this kind of stuff and i'm like yeah that's really fucked up yeah. yeah they had episodes like that actually discussing things like that where i you know as a as i grew up i realized you're you are not your fucking skin tone you're not your you're not your fucking khakis <laughs> yeah you're not your fucking no i am i am my fucking khakis i oh, okay. i am my ikea furniture fuck, fuck fuck fight club is not for me anymore i'm too old i i am very comfortable in in all my uh, opulence but yes <laughs> i don't i don't want to be punched in the face anymore i'm past that you don't want to blow a smiley face into the side of a building no i'm way past that but um no i just i'm venting because it's just it, it's so it, it it just sucks to see that kind of stuff now where it, people are saying like you have if you are black I mean, it used to be that if you were black and people said you had to used act to be. black. No, it used to be. It seemed, someone said you were black and you had to act black. That, that's like the, that was one of the most racist things you could say to somebody. It's almost like it's almost like Democrats are the real racists. Yeah. So are Republicans, but they're both racist. Yeah, I would no, say, you know, no, and no, if I, I had been honest about myself, I would say, I, you know, what's, I, I would say I, I may be prejudiced against some things, but I am not a racist. Despite I mean, what this show, you know, <laughs> despite I mean, what the show no, makes I mean, it. like, everyone's fucking a little racist. It's yeah. not that bad to admit that. It's in our fucking biology. We are meant to... Cross the street. <laughs> I was going to say we are meant to be, like, to, to feel more safe around people that we identify as we we're homogenous in that sense but yeah. i'm glad that we have the modern context to sort of like you know get past that and and be multicultural and and sort of come together in that sense and i just find it funny that like i mean i'm joking when i say democrats are the real racist like it's sarcastic tone but they really are fighting for segregation. basically just segregation and and uh, just separation and it's just funny yeah it is funny i mean i'm, I'm trying to laugh about it really but like every time Every time the voice actor debate comes up, I always get a little upset because I'm just like, what does it... I mean, it's not like... It's it's not like when, when people used to play other races in, in live action stuff. Like, that's not... You can't do that anymore, and it and shouldn't be done. And even then, if you do it right, it can be fucking funny. It can be funny. I mean, no, I meant more the dramatic. I still posit that... Uh... It's the it's the classic example, but Tropic Thunder that that role he plays in that movie is fucking hilarious. Well, because it's got layers. Yeah, exactly. he's an Australian guy playing a black guy playing. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. He's in he's he's in real life. He's a white actor who's playing Australian guy playing a black guy. Yeah, he's not he, he's not himself playing a black guy. There's layers to that fucking character. That's why it gets yeah. a pass. But it's hysterical exactly. either way. 
It's not. Uh, it's not. It's not. It what's it? Breakfast? Not Breakfast Club. Uh, breakfast at Tiffany's with that guy who played an Asian guy. Like that. Oh, that's with, different. Um, that's fucking. Or just Meredith. Yeah, that's racist. That's bad. You know. It's still funny. Though. It's still funny, of course. But I'm saying it's not. That's not something. That's not something that you should do now. That's why. I, um, that's why I bought an iPlayboy subscription so I could retreat back to the eighties. It doesn't matter, even though if, if you're not playing a race, though, because even if you just show up in blackface, they'll take your episode off of Netflix. Did you hear about that? They removed the episode of Community where they play Dungeons and Dragons because there's like a two second joke where um, the dude, the Asian dude from The Hangover, uh, the guy who's not funny, uh, Senior Chang, he he's playing a drow elf, so he's just showing up in like complete blackface, basically. So they removed that episode from Netflix, even though that's probably one of the funniest jokes in the entire episode. It's also one of the best episodes of that fucking show, period. But well, whatever. Good. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. Cancel, cl- I mean, cancel I still, Hollywood. I have, the DVD, I have the DVD box set. They can't take that shit away from me yet. Yeah. Until they come and kick my fucking door down for owning season one of Code Monkeys. Thank God. Because I'm... of a character named Black Steve. Thank God I'm Jewish. <laughs> I think I, you I, now fucking that I... wait. You fucking wait. I look, at my, I look at my nose in the mirror every goddamn day. I am absolutely some part Ashkenazi Jew. I have no idea what part of me is, but I have to be. No, I mean, saying that's really ironic, right? Because if this was like, you know, the 1940s, <laughs> we would not be saying, thank God we're Look, Jews. man, I'm just saying people tell, talk about they were burning books. They weren't looking into the books they were burning, but whatever. It's, you know, history repeats itself. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's all right. Okay. Let's just burn yep. down. Let's just take down every Abraham Lincoln statue. <laughs> <laughs> I really hate statues. I hate their big penises. The only one, the one thing I agreed with that I, I think I heard someone say or whatever. I, I think it was like an offhand comment, but it was what I was thinking is that if people are so offended by statues, just move them inside a museum, because then cool. you can yeah, place that's, them that's within the their arc- historical context. Exactly. That's the argument that everyone says, but people don't want solutions. They just want to be angry. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I just want to pretend they're living in exciting times. I mean, the thing is, is really... like, how much more exciting can you get than a fucking pandemic? Like, we are, it's already bad. Like, stop f- making it worse. <laughs> well, what about, you know what's more exciting than a uh, pandemic? A pandemic happening at the same time as a race riot. You're right. You're right. As a, as a race war. As a race war. Well, I wish the fucking cops was... could keep it in their pants for a week. I mean, yeah. for Jesus Christ, I... they, they killed that guy. They shot that guy in the back twice. Like just I, 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 I think we said this last time. I absolutely agree. The police need reform and George Floyd yeah. died completely unjustly. But I've also heard plenty of podcasts that have said at this point, the BLM movement or whoever, the left in general has overshot their fucking goal. It should have been about Black Lives Matter, but now it's about like black trans lives and racism. And oh, all this other of course. Shit. Like, you guys should have just kept it fucking simple. You overshot your goal and now no one's taking you seriously. That always happens with now, them. Now it's a crusade against every single statue across the US, whether they were racist or not. Yeah. And it, it, it doesn't even seem to be about race at this point it just seems to be about disestablishing whiteness but whatever i don't like i don't know who i don't know who it was but it was a black dude saying uh that the the people who want the they don't want to solve the problem of racism they want to amplify it so that they have something to fucking fight well because their entire identity is based on how much victimhood they have yeah so they got to continue it not actually fix it People have said this to death over the past few months, but th- this whole thing, th- this whole leftist thing that's been happening since before even Trump got elected, it is just a religion. They are just yes. replacing actual religion with this shit. And it's like it's a cult th- there. Yeah, it's a cult. And their entire their entire existence is subsiding off of how much victimhood they can accrue. It's like currency. <laughs> yeah. And that's why cancel culture is so fucking prevalent, because. Uh, I, I saw this great, I, I don't remember who said it. It was like a tweet or something, but it was just like, do not, you shouldn't, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You shouldn't confess your sins in a religion that doesn't offer absolution. Oh these yeah. People these people don't believe in forgiveness and that's the bottom line. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, if you bend your knee to the mob, they don't care. They'll just destroy your life and move on to the next target. They're just termites. And it's 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 just upsetting because I see so many people bending the knee. It goes back to the voice acting thing. It goes back to like, oh, we're going to take this episode of Community off Netflix because it has a really funny joke in it that could be misconstrued in the wrong context, which someone even said on Twitter when I talked about that yesterday. The immediate next line is surely the black chick in that show, like looking at him and going, so we're just going to ignore that hate crime. Yeah. Like in context, it is funny. And it is like, say what you will about Community. I, that show 
makes fun of the PC shit so fucking well, and it did it before all this shit started popping off. Like, everyone in the world is acting that way now just turned into Britta, the character from Community, who is basically that show's version of a social justice warrior, and everyone's just like, ah, oh, God, this again? Like, that's her character. <laughs> oh, man. When someone like when someone on the show says like God, you're like the AT and T of people. <laughs> there's, dude, like, fuck. There's an exchange between Childish Gambino and Joel McHale on that show where it's just like, of course you play football. It's in your, it's in your. Uh, what does he say? It's in, it's in, it's in your, it's in your blood. That's racist. Your soul. That's racist. Your eyes. That's gay. That's homophobic. <laughs> that's black that's racist and it's like damn <laughs> that is funny oh my god maybe i should watch that show community is actually a good show oh it's my god. like watch the first two seasons and then never watch anything past that but okay like, Jesus Christ. yeah that does sound really funny yeah except now you're gonna miss i'll just fucking drive over to your house and let you watch the dungeons and dragons episode because i assume hulu took it down too yeah i'm sure they did fucking christ yeah um it's also great seeing childish gambino or it's donald glover doing like this role and then like looking at it in retrospect as like oh and he's gonna become like a super woke rapper later <sighs> the worst well because you watch like Derek comedy like the thing he first started in it was like a sketch comedy thing that used to be on like college humor and youtube and like you know, it's just funny looking at it in retrospect. There's literally an entire sketch based around him being the guy that's like, yo, man, you like hip hop? And then he like takes him into a basement and he's like, yeah, I got fucking Coolio on ice here. You want him? Like, <laughs> or, or what, what he's, when he's like this weird elf creature in a kid's closet, he's like, no, I'm a wink. And then he just starts getting like more and more into his own backstory. He's like, I'm not some guy who, whose wife cheated on him. And then he, cre he did a double murder homicide and had to run away to Kentucky. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. I mean, yeah, say what you will about Donald Glover now. I, I still kind of like his music. I don't like, uh, granted, I don't like, I don't know. This is America is not that good of a song, but like a lot of his other albums are fucking good, so I don't care. But, uh, well, that song yeah. really did a lot, you know? It took a stand yeah. and changed the, yeah. changed the way we all think. And, changed, and got drunk, uh, impeached. Yeah. It worked. His stand up is funny, too. He has like one stand up special, and it's actually great. Mm. Whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just wrote statues bad in the show notes. <laughs> oh, I guess it should be. Uh, I guess the banner should be us as statues getting torn down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it's just a statue of me sucking your dick. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. No, it should be both oh, of us doing oh. the, um, the the awesome cougars pose. I have to I have to say this now. It has nothing to do with anything we were talking about, but I told Brainy I would say this on the show tomorrow because he said this last night and I said you would love it. Okay. He said that when you instead of calling it blue balls, we should call it the cummy aches. <laughs> and he's a gay guy. <laughs> That's so true though. Because my so... stomach hurts if I get blue balls. <laughs> That's awesome. I like. Can we name the episode Cummy Aches? The Cummy Aches? Yes. All oh, right. that's I'm gonna let him know. awesome. Let him know. Oh, that's man, funny. I told, him, I told him, like, yo, I'm saying that on the show tomorrow. <laughs> Matt will immediately glom on that. Like, that's <sighs> the best shit ever. That is awesome. Yeah, fuck Blue Balls. Cummy Aches for life. <laughs> I can't wait to go a few miles down the road to Cummy Aches, Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Friendship ended with Blue Balls. Cummy Aches. <laughs> My new best friend. <laughs> that should be the episode title, but whatever. <laughs> that's the, and then that's the banner. It's, a, it's that stupid meme. <laughs> but, but like you can and like Friendship you can see my swollen statues. testicles through my pants. <laughs> or you can see our swollen testicles through our pants. <laughs> and like we have like that. You know when they would draw like in cartoons, they would draw a character, and it looks like he's um. Oh man! Gay? No, yeah, no, no, no. When he's got like, uh, when he's oh, really, like it's like the Simpsons when he's gay. really, really sick, and you know they kind of like, they give like a pale tone to their forehead and like put like blue lines and shit. Yes. Yeah, you should do that too. <laughs> to our balls or to our foreheads? To, to our faces, so we look like oh. we're, we're looking. Like we're not getting any oxygen. <laughs> like we're like we're sweating really hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And we're like, we're like hover handing each other's hands when we're shaking hands and we're afraid if we touch each other, we'll instantly jizz. 
I have, I have now got the nude clan boys, by the way, to start like loving the memes where it's like, I did big cumb in my pants. <laughs> cumb. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, Fabino has one meme where it's like a guy from Deus Ex and he's got like a huge forehead. But it's, he, sp he spells cum, C-U-M-B. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, bro, I'm tired of hearing that you came without me. What's up, man? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because I also showed him the, the J. Jonah Jameson one. It's like, Parker, she touched my gene. You did big cum. <laughs> Zooey mama. Zooey mama. Oh, and I have to write cummy eggs in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> so true so tr it's funny because it's true and he's a gay guy so he's just in the chat last night just like i'm so tired of people calling it blue balls they should be calling it cummy eggs is he the, is he a part of the show the podcast no no he's just in our he's just in our psn chat all the time oh all right well he sounds pretty funny you uh uh the one of the former hosts of their show was in the chat with us last night and he was saying branny this is why i said you should have replaced me on the show when i left for california <laughs> So apparently, one of the hosts wanted Brandy to be one of the hosts. Oh, man. Brandy also lives in Florida, so there's a time zone thing. It wouldn't work. Mm. Oh, he must be a big Trump supporter. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, he gets really woke in the chat sometimes, and I just say, like, yeah, but you're gay, so who cares? <laughs> you're gay, so you're not a person, so who cares? That's true. He is subhuman. <laughs> oh, Christ almighty. I've been watching, yeah. I've been watching Eat Man. Uh, what <laughs> it's an anime called eat man it came out oh. in 97 he can eat things and then manifest it well usually it's weapons he, he, he'll eat parts of a gun and then he can manifest it in his hand whole so like as long as he's oh. eating something he can like manifest it later man that sucks because i have an idea for like a, a, tw a 20s gangster show mm -hmm. or a 20s gangster comic where the dude goes to hell and then the devil decides to bring him back to life and be his emissary of evil, but he gives him the power to just sprout guns from anywhere on his body. That's fine. Uh, it, this is from 96. No one's got to remember. 97. I guess. There's I guess, I guess as e long as no one thinks that Moxie is ripping off that, uh, that comic where it's like the maid I hired recently is suspicious. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? No. Oh, wait. Uh, wait, maybe, because I think I've seen clips. I've seen... Uh, still uh, panels panels it's, Thank you. it's like a little it's like a little blonde boy and he's got a brown skinned purple haired maid yes i have her. seen that yeah yeah and i'm like i created the character before i even knew this existed and i love that artist but yeah it just if anyone calls you out i just say it's an homage well because also well because doesn't minat from street fighter five also have a maid costume as, like, i don't care i don't know can i talk about this fucking show no, I want to talk about characters that look like my OC so people can call me out for... Oh, because someone finally commented on the comic today and said, yo, this reminds me of that comic where it's the elf that's really lewd and she wants to fuck the big orc and he doesn't want anything to do with it. I'm like, yo, honestly, that was one of my inspirations, so thank you. <laughs> you know which one I'm talking about, right? No, I... No! <laughs> it's cute. It's okay. very cute. It's wholesome. So Eat Man. <laughs> Eat Man is a show... It, it, it came out. At, it, it reminds the the main character looks a little bit like Trigon, except Trigon, except he has. Uh, I'm sorry, Vash, except he has like long, white hair. Vash he has the vampire. Vash, the, yes, Stash the the vampire. But his name's his name's a Bolt to Crank, Bolt Crank. Oh <laughs> yeah, and he um, so like this came out after Trigon, but before Cowboy Bebop, and I'm talking like a year. So like Trigon's ninety five. This is ninety. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 96. Trigon was like 97. No, it's 90. Trigon's 96. Eat Man's 97. Cowboy Bebop's 98. So this is like right in the middle of those two things. Like, like, yeah. And it's and even like by, in tone, sort of. But it's just, it's just a weird show. Cause like the main guy, Bolt Crank is like kind of is enigmatic. He's like a mystery. Like I can't really figure out like his, he's, he's consistent. His character is consistent in every episode, but each episode is is standalone. So it's it's like always him interacting with new characters. But he's like, he's not exactly a bad person, but he's very like anti hero ish. Because there's an episode, for example, there's an episode when um he gets uh oops wait what happens in that episode? Oh, he gets hired by a guerrilla uh army to go save another mercenary. Who, who had a failed assassination attempt. They were trying, they hired the previous mercenary to go kill a dictator in, in the city. 
and he failed and got captured. So this, this, these guys hired both crank to go and rescue him before he could talk and give the location of these, these gorilla guys. And <laughs> Bolt always never really wants to do these jobs, but he always gets kind of forced into them, but like through moral reasons, like he wasn't going to do the job, but then they said, well, we're going to kill this, 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 um, village lady. They imply they're going to kill one of the women in the, in the, in the camp that they're hiding out in if he doesn't go do it. So he's like, well, all right. He goes, rescues the guy who's kind of an asshole. He brings him back and, oh yeah. And they, they, they do kill the dictator. They bring him back and both finds out that the reason why the mercenary was going to do the job was because they, they uh, promised the village girl to him. He could fuck her. <laughs> so <laughs> before both can even do anything, the chick, the woman that they brought, they, they brought out because the, 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 the gorilla guy and, and the, uh, the previous, the first mercenary are laughing because they're like, well, we, we, you know, we already broke her in. Ha ha ha. You know? <laughs> And uh, the one guy who feels bad about it, you know, he, you know, there's not a whole lot of like story going on. It's the, the episodes are told more through like action, not like they, none of the characters sit down and tell you exactly what's happening. Right. So the woman takes the, the machine gun away from the one guy and just blows away everybody in the room. And <laughs> Bolt is on the opposite wall with bullet holes around him. And he's got this smile on his face like... <laughs> Yeah, like he like knew this was all going to happen or something. <laughs> and the other mercenary doesn't get killed, but they all they leave together. And the other mercenaries tell him both like, you know, we did pretty good. We should join up. We should join forces, you know, uh, uh, talking to him. Bolt's like, yeah, and he's got the smile on his face. And he's like, well, why you don't want to join forces? And then he, Bolt manifests the gun in his hand and just kills the mercenary in like cold blood. I'm like, what the fuck? What is going on? Every episode is pretty much like that. So I, I found one episode really confused me, and I tried to find like a review, and it was just people complaining about how the episode was too avant garde. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, the show is a little avant garde. Like, like the beginning of that episode, it was two minutes of a silhouette of a child running with laughter, like looped laughter. I mean, it was like two minutes. So it's Twin Peaks. It's okay. Twin Peaks. Yes. It, basically, the show is like a combination of Cowboy Bebop, Twin Peaks, and Trigun. Like, the setting is like Trigon, the, the style is like Cowboy Bebop, and the tone is like Cowboy Bebop. And, and then there'd be, like, weird... Because there's a the third... I don't want to give... I'm only, I'm only halfway through the show so far. There's only, and thank God there's only 12 episodes. That's why I picked this show to watch. And then Eat Man 98 is another 12 episodes. Mm. But it's like each episode is like a new, a new woman character for him to meet up with and then just, you know, either help her or not. <laughs> and the other episode just was very strange. It just felt weird. And I'm like, what is up with this character? Is she like a ghost? Like, what is fucking up with this? It's like a big... He's in the middle of a desert in a big gothic hotel. He was sent there to take... To steal... Uh, to get the deed to it for another group of people. He falls in love with her. And, and all this stuff. I'm like, what is going on? She was a ghost. <laughs> I'm like, so this show also has paranormal shit? Like, what is this show? I like it. It's not. I don't think it'll go down as like my favorite show ever, but it's it's interesting. It's like a really cool show. Yeah. Uh, just this this just in. Apparently this week, uh, Nostalgia Critics gonna review Alita: Battle Angel. Good for him. No, but the thumbnail is him with giant eyes. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> uh, I I've been pl- I was playing some Ring Fit Adventure. That's a good game. Uh, oh. <laughs> It's a game? I thought it was just like an exercise thing. Well, yeah, but it's a game. It's like an RPG. Really? Yeah. I don't know anything about it's like, it. It's like if Wii Fit was a game. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, so like you can do the exercises, just the exercises if you want, but it's got like a story mode with RPG elements where like it's basically you go into a level and then you jog in place to have the character run on rails through the level, but there's like things you got to jump over and things you can like when you squeeze the ring, it like shoots out an air burst. You can use that to like break uh, boxes along the side of the road huh. and like pick up coins, or you can pull the ring to suck shit up and then you can suck up rings and experience tokens on the side. But then you get into random battles that are in your way and you just, you pick an exercise and target like whichever enemy you want to target. And then like your attack is just you doing a series of reps <laughs> for whatever exercise that is against the enemy. Well, this would explain, like, the images I would see of, like, elves doing these exercises or whatever. Yeah. Well, you're not really an elf. You're just, like, a normal dude. Mm. 
but um i mean it is very much an rpg the enemies have health bars and like the the better you do in the exercises the more damage you'll do and eventually you like after the first world you gain the ability to like do color coded shit so like oh if i attack a red enemy with a red skill which is basically like an upper arms exercise it'll do more damage to them shit like that but it's really good at like it doesn't overload you with information it just sort of like it kind of like dance central just shows you here's a guy doing what you're supposed to be doing and then it'll give you tips like every once in a while like breathe out when you do this or make sure to straighten your back like it doesn't overload you with the information it's very good at like casually helping you understand how your posture should be in your form when you're doing these exercises it's really cool uh, they patched in a rhythm game mode recently, so that's fucking cool, and it really gets you sweating. How much? And how much was it? So I got it. I got it because I saw it at Walmart. They had two copies, and um, this game has been selling out like fucking crazy because it came out like right around the time COVID hit. So everyone wants to work out from their house. Yeah. So this game was selling like fucking hotcakes. So I actually, I think it was seventy at Walmart, but I think it's eighty everywhere else online because like Walmart does this thing where they sell everything for ten dollars less. Um, oh, but it, oh, okay. I, I constantly see cheap ass gamers saying it's back in stock at Amazon. So maybe Nintendo's actually like, no, it isn't because I'm looking at it right now and it's selling, it's by used for $140. Yeah. <laughs> Almost so keeps selling if, out. If you want it, check local Walmarts and shit, or just keep your eyes peeled for like Amazon or Best Buy or Newegg or whatever. Cause I don't think Nintendo's making any more of these. Probably not. I, I think they're just liquidating their, their warehouse stock. Uh, but it's cool as shit, and it's like it's that kind of thing where it's just Nintendo making magic. I don't know how the ring works. You slide a Joy-Con in the ring, and then you slide you you put another Joy-Con in like a leg strap. And I do not because like I don't know how the Joy-Con's able to tell that I'm squeezing or pulling the ring. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know what motion sensor magic is being used to determine that shit. Because I, I at first I figured oh it's tracking the position of the joy con moving up slightly because when you squeeze the ring it like you know moves the joy con up because it's at the top of the ring yeah but then like when i move the joy con up slightly with my hands while not squeezing the ring it doesn't do anything so i'm like how does it know it's weird yeah it's really well done uh it's really cool i, I never played we fit so maybe we fit does all the same shit like casually explaining form and posture and like, how to do the exercises correctly but I think it works way better than that stupid balance board. Cause like, dude, you work up a fucking sweat playing this game. Hmm. Like it is like, I, I can only do it like 20 minutes at a time before like the game's like, do you want to take a break and be ready for tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to cool down. Cause this shit is actually like, I don't know. My deltoids, they hurt. <laughs> well, I've got a, I've got a spare tire going on now since I've been working out. So I should, oh, nice! I should do some lunges when I when I bend. If I if I sit compressed, I've got tits under my tits. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you'd probably like Ring Fit. I don't know. If I wanted to get that boxing game. I had fun with a demo for that, but this what, sounds. Arm? Yeah. No. 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 It was. I don't it, was know. A, it was a boxing exercise game. Oh, the fitness boxing. Yeah, game. Yeah. 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 That was fun, but this sounds better. It sounds like an a game. An actual game would be more fun. It is. Yeah, and like. I don't I don't know, the, story, it, pick it up. the story mode's fun like eventually you, you you're like oh i gained the ability to Come. pick up ingredients and create smoothies which are basically like your your recovery <laughs> items and like attack buffs but see they gotta and make, it, they gotta it, make well, a game where you where you play as a huge guy like shoniki and you get protein uh so the 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 boss of this game yeah. drago oh, he's my. this extremely swell dragon nice <laughs> hold on let me find a picture because they spelled his name weird. It's not uh, Ivan Drago. It's pronounced like Drago, but it's spelled like it's French. Oh. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if this works. It's a fucking <laughs> That's bar a dragon. Cool. Yeah. And all the enemies are like themed after exercise equipment. So there's like a dog and its ears curl up. So it looks like a fucking kettlebell. <laughs> And those two, those two dumbbells he's holding are like crab enemies that like have two huge like claws. Oh. it's cool. I like that game. I like this game a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see the eyes of the. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. So Ring Fit Adventure is cool. Good luck finding it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but if you do, I'd say it's worth picking it up. I've been. I'm. I think I'm like 
nearly done with uh, Yakuza 3. Oh, cool. Yeah. I think playing that game is so weird after playing Kiwami 2 just because it's not a remake. It's a remaster, so it's like... Yeah, so it's like kind of lower fi. Yeah, and I mean, the look of it's fine. It's just that there's there's fixed camera angles and like you have to hit X to go into a building as opposed to like you just went everywhere in Yakuza 2 Kiwami. Yeah. So I, I don't know, like I don't know what the rest of them are gonna be like because I like four and five were all on PS3. I didn't know that. I thought five was on PS4. I know six definitely is because I have it. But I think I might just keep going because I'm getting through these pretty fast. I, I was doing all the subquests in two, and I basically turned a Kiru into a fucking tank. But in this, <laughs> in this, the fucking, it's not as fun to do the, the subplots because they like disappear. So I have to do them like at oh. the time when you're supposed to. Yeah, I hate that timed quest shit. Yeah, so I haven't really been bothering. But I mean, and you can't hold as much stuff like in Kiwami 2. Like, in Kiwami 2, you can have dozens of fucking health things. But in this, it's like you can only hold 12 things at a time. Right. 12 anythings at a time. Like, your your armor and your and your weapons aren't in separate things like in the other games. So, yeah. it's a little pain. It's a pain, but the story's good. So, I, I'm enjoying it in any case. And, like, the imp- when you're fighting people, the impacts don't feel as good. But it's because I mean, Kiwami is a whole new engine, so I, I get it. But yeah, it's it's just it's not as fun to play, but the story's good, so I'm still having fun playing it. It's still it's still fucking ugh. It's you know it's still Yakuza. It's <laughs> what I do yeah. enjoy about this one though is that uh, Kiru's. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't realize you ugh because I sent you that picture of Nostalgia Critic with huge eyes. Yeah. Ugh. Like, uh, Kiru's... Are on, dude? Yeah, yeah, oh my god, that's exactly it. Kiru is, uh, like, he's, he's, it's funny, he's got more confidence now, and he's nicer. Like, yeah. not, not to, I mean, if you're, when I say he has more confidence, is when, when people are fucking with him, he just straight up tells them that he's gonna kick their ass. I he's, mean, I just, <laughs> I just wanna get to, I wanna play through all these so I can get to Yakuza 6 and just see him as, like, a dad on a tropical island playing a ukulele. Is that, is that what happens? I think, yeah. Oh, <laughs> At least oh, oh my god. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's what I like about these games is that he's actually... Dude, I keep finding the fucking Yakuza 6, like, collectors of the Steelbook anyway, like, everywhere. And, like, they're constantly cheap-ass gamers like, yo, Yakuza 6 Art of Life Edition with, like, the shot glass and the art book is, like, 20 bucks. Oh, fuck. Because I, I only... I just got the... I didn't get the shotgun. Uh, shotgun. I didn't get the shot glass. I just got that for, like, 15 bucks or something, the Steelbook. Yeah, yeah. I'll probably just end up getting the Steelbook, but whatever. Because I don't... At the time, I'd only had... I think I had 0 and 6. Because six was so fucking cheap, yeah. And then Kiwami one and two, their prices went down a lot. Or, or I got, I, I think I got two because I got a gift card. Because that was like sixty bucks. I, I forget. It was either yeah. two or the, this new remaster collection of of three, four, and five. But now I have yeah. them all except for uh, Dead Souls Dead and those Souls. weird Japanese ones that they don't bring over here. No. No, no, no. The, the zombie one was definitely released over here on PS3. No, no, I meant the feudal Japanese ones. No, I wish those were really released, though. They look so funny. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know if I should get the zombie one or not, but it's not ex- it's not crazy expensive. If I ever see it out in the wild, I'll get it, but I'm not going to like tr- get it off of eBay or something. Did you uh, Did you get anything off the Steam sale? No, I haven't gotten anything off of a Steam sale in years, because I, fi- I think everything I wanted, I've already gotten. Yeah, I decided to treat myself. I got a Duke Nukem 3D, so I can finally play through that. Mm. I hate giving Randy pitch for money, but whatever. And um, he is a huge faggot. I know. And Killer Seven, finally, I snagged that for ten bucks. Oh, that's a great price. Yeah. Oh, you and gotta tell I, me how it plays on PC then, because the only reason... I'm really interested because I last time I, I must have played that game about a decade ago now. At this point, yeah. it was on PS2, which yeah. is like. It's fine, but that's not the way you want to play that game. You want to play that game on a GameCube controller. Well, that's what I did play it on, and I hated it. Like, I think I, I... That's when I was working at GameStop, so I don't think I bought it. I must have, like, checked it out. Well, the game is also just, like, not fun. <laughs> it's not, but the... Uh, but it's, I, like, purposely kind of shittily made, but it's so cool that That's it why matter. I still... I don't understand where... Like, why I loved Suda51 so much even before No More Heroes came out. I was excited yeah, for No More Heroes. Yeah, he makes Heroes. games that are, like, kind of shitty, but, like, on purpose. And it's like, I didn't... I think I just... I must have looked up a lot of stuff about Killer7 and just knew about it more than I played it. Because, I mean, I always loved the guy. And I still love him. I think he's fantastic. Killer7 was one of the first games I remember watching, like, trailers on YouTube. And yeah. And being like, God damn, I want to play this. Yeah, me too. Um, 
If, if it plays a little easier on the PC, I'm definitely going to buy it. Cause I, I would I, imagine it does. I don't know why it wouldn't. If you have like mouse controls and look, like, it's, it's because it's suited 51. I guarantee you he went, he was like, okay, the PC version, you, you're not allowed. You're, he, he'll make it so you're not allowed to use the mouse or something. You have to play it with a fucking flight stick. Yeah. Like he'll do that. He did that with silver case. You, you hold trigger to move forward and then you, yeah. Um, but I also got a couple of hentai games. Uh, I played through one already called Tropical Liquor. I I was this close to buying um, Succubus Dreams or whatever that. Uh... Sweet Dream Succubus. I bought that. <laughs> okay. Sweet, I like Doxy's Sweet Dream art. Succubus. I bought that. Because <laughs> yeah. I like Doxy's art. Doxy's a good artist. So do I. Um, but I wasn't gonna get a titty game. Uh, anyway, Tropical Liquor is just a honey pop ripoff, but instead of a match three game, it's like. You get 12, it's like a three by four grid of uh, six matching sets of tiles. And then you have to like 30 seconds to like memorize the pattern and then you have to memory match them. Oh. Yeah. So it's not that great a game, but the art is by Sayori, who is the artist that did Nekopara. Mm-hmm. So the art's great. <laughs> so that makes up for it. And it's got a fucking brown skin short stack girl who dotes on you. And I'm just like, that's it. That's the one I'm going for. I'm doing it. <laughs> well, I mean, just a big sis? Dream Succubus or whatever it's called is like my thing. But yeah, yeah, there's a few fucking Succubus games that aren't out yet that are like, like they're still listed as coming soon on Steam. Like there's one that's like, wait, my neighbors are Succubi or something. <sighs> and I want that game, but it's I'll, not out yet. I want a clown girl fucking uh, dating sim. Oh name. God, fuck you. But I, I hate it because there's that one, there's that one person that draws good clown girl girls and I hate it. I, I, I was telling Christine, I was like, I guess I got a clown fetish. And then before I could even finish my own sentence, I said, well, I got a fetish for a lot of things. So <laughs> yeah. You're just a broken man. I am. <laughs> anyway, Tropical Liquor is like three bucks, so who cares? Oh, no, no, yeah. I, I just... I want a game... I want, like, titty games that are still games. Like, the game... Like, the, the Succubus one doesn't look like a game. It looks like a visual novel. That's why I didn't bother. Yeah. Um, there's a few of those out. I'm trying to think of one that I actually... I mean, I guess I could just open up Steam and look for games that I have that, like, are actual titty games that are games that you would want to play that aren't two dollars like i i swear by the deep space waifu games those are good for being like really cheap those are just good shmups you can beat them in like an hour oh. but like they're fun i am getting more into shmups yeah i and you would absolutely love the soundtracks for those games at the very least because they're just like shmups always have great music no, but Deep Space Waifu games, the, the music is just, like, ethereal, like, synth pop. No, 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 I'm saying in general, the, those games always just seem to have good music. Yeah, well, when the gameplay is as simple as that, I guess you could focus way more on the music. Yeah. Not that the gameplay is bad, it's just simple. No, it's please, simple, I mean, you're, 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 you're... Please let me scroll up, Steam, I know... A lot of, like, a lot of the shmups that I've been get downloading, like, you can hold down A, you don't even have to press A, <laughs> but the games are hard. Like, you're basically just moving. You have to get around yeah. obstacles, not so much. Yeah, you're just trying not to let that one pixel hitbox get touched. Yeah, man. Oh, man. They're so hard. I know. Um, let me go to Filthy Anime Trash on my Steam. A lot of games I like are just too too hard for me. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I got that Pantsu Hunter back to the 90s. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. No. It's like a hentai game, but all the girls are drawn in like 90s anime style. Cool. Or like late early 90s anime style you would you would absolutely dig the art style for that it's on switch too i assume censored i think there's an uncensored patch for this game i have no idea what's it called again uh pantsu hunter okay let me look that let me look that up Patch the 90s uh, i also have galgun double piece and galgun 2 those are real games hmm Oh man, yeah, look at that. That's funny. Yeah. Save seventy percent off. Oh, it's it's two sixty nine. I should, yeah. Is it a game? It's a visual novel from what I can tell. Oh, but, then I mean, forget it. What, like you're not gonna like that art style. So like oh, for Pantsu Hunter? I said like you're not gonna oh, like Oh, oh yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> I think it's worth it just for the art style alone because there's no other visual novels made today that look like that unless you want to get a fucking PC-98 emulator out or something. But God, I would, though. I'd learn Japanese. Well, yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? That's the thing. Like, I want to play You Know, A Girl That Chants Love at the Bound of This World. I've wanted to play that game because I love the soundtrack. 
and they re-release it on PS4 and Switch recently, but fifty dollars, and it's just a visual novel. So it's yeah, like I'm not seeing that. Fifty fuck, dude. Like I don't know what madman at whatever whatever publisher decided to bring this game west decided to give you know like this this visual novel a day one edition, but that exists. <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? Like you know how there's big games these days that come out with like a day one. No, edition? I know, and I never understood what that means. I don't know what it means for a visual novel. I can yeah. understand it for like a multiplayer shooter like Overwatch or some shit, but you know. Just release the game finished. Like, fucking Christ. No, I mean, no, no, no. It doesn't mean, like, it's early access. It just means, like, oh. you put the game out, and then, like, I guess you get some extra content. I don't know what extra content comes, again, in a visual novel. <laughs> Especially one that's as old as that one, but whatever. Extra cummies. And you know what? I don't even know if I want to play the modern version, because I bet the soundtrack is, like, fully remastered and reorchestrated, and I want to hear those sweet fucking FM synth tunes. From the PC-98 version. But unfortunately, that version was never translated. Mm. What was, as far as what I was, know, what was the schmuck game you told me about? Deep Space Waifu. That's it. It's kind of weird because you're, you're, you're shooting enemies so you don't die, but you're also trying to shoot these giant girls in the background to, like, destroy their clothes. <laughs> so if you have a giant-ass fetish, I guess that works. I do. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> That's your game. The art's not fantastic, but it does kind of get better as the series goes on. That game, oh, it's a dollar fifty. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, they're really cheap. They're all like two bucks. Oh, all right. Uh, and that, there's like eight of them. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that other game. Um, remember that game where you fight giant women in like a, a square kind of isometric view? It, no. It, you don't remember that? Are you talking about ha Hakanawa? Um, yeah, I can't pronounce it. Uh. Dungeon Explorer or whatever. Yeah, they just put that on Switch. Yeah, yeah, but it's not on American Switch, I think, right? Or is it now? No, it is. Oh, fuck. How much is it? Uh, I don't know. I think it... Because uh, that game really looks like a lot of fun. On wish list. Hakan, Hako, Miwa. Wait, which, which, uh, which one should I get? Should I get Deep Space? Oh, I also, I also didn't get that Tokidama or whatever game for like a buck when it was a dollar. Oh, did you? What do you think? No, I didn't get oh. it. I forgot. That's whatever. Uh, Hakaniwa Explorer Plus for Switch. It is twelve bucks. Oh man, I should get that. Yeah, because I assume there's no nudity, so it's like, well, I could play this on Switch because it's on my Steam wish list. But it's like, eh, if there's no nudity, then I might as well just get this on a console. I'm yeah, exactly. It. So should I get it Deep Space good. Waifu, Deep Space Waifu Fantasy, or Deep Space Waifu World, or Deep Deep Space Waifu Neko Mimi, or Flat what Justice? I was gonna say, what about Flat Justice? I'm not um, getting Flat Justice. I, I got them all, so... Oh, there's a do, Deep Space Waifu collection. Yeah, and they also do kind of have a story that goes... Like, it's not... It's it's very loose. But they do, like, reference shit. Like, the ending of Deep Space Waifu Fantasy is like, we're going to the worst place in the universe, and it says we're going to Earth, and that leads into Deep Space Waifu World. Wait, what's Legends? Is this free to play? That, oh, come that's not soon. out yet. I, I think that's going to be, like, a best of. Christ. Yeah. It's too much of this. They're fun. They're really fun. No, I mean, there's just too many games. I don't know which one to pick. Just, I'd start with the first one, and if you like it, go to Flat Justice, and if you like that, go to Neko Mimi, and then Fantasy. Well, what's the difference between the bundle and the collection? Because there's a bundle, and it's like $4. Uh, I assume the collection come with the soundtracks. I don't know. You have to look at the bundle contents. Yeah, or I something. Deep, Get Deep Space Waifu plus all DLCs. Oh. The so. DLC is just the soundtrack. Okay. Yeah. Like, the way Steam works, they make the soundtracks DLCs for some fucking reason. Oh, apparently I have, oh, I, have 73, I have 73 cents in cards that I've sold, too. Nice. I have 25 right now because I play these hentai games, and those cards sell for high, usually. Oh. When well, I can get, like, 10 cents for one card, it's like, all right, yeah. Well, yeah. I'll play these dog shit hentai games. Why not? What about Waifu Uncovered or uh, Hentai Jigsaw Puzzle? Oh, all those fucking games. Good Christ. <laughs> there are so many of those on Steam now. They're all bad. I bet. There's a, there's a game that's also similar to Deep Space Waifu called Ahegal. But it, it's like a shmup, but you're just dodging. You're not shooting anything. You're just dodging long enough to get the girl naked. It, it was all right. I beat it in like an hour. But I, I would actually recommend Deep Space Waifu. I think those games... Because they have a good sense of humor, too. Mm. Well, I'll, like, add, they I'll add one of them. We'll see what happens. I can't yeah. make any promises. 
Yeah. Why aren't you gonna buy Flat Justice, the best one? <laughs> and that one you play as a cop. <laughs> no. Where the fuck is my... This game is marked as adult only. I know that. I don't have... My... I also got Layers of Fear 2. I haven't played it yet, but I really like Layers of Fear 1 and Observer and Blair Witch, so I assume I'll like Layers of Fear 2. I can't find the Add to Wishlist button. Oh, there it is. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta get that hack in Ewa Explorer Plus sometime on Switch. Yeah. And like I said, Pantsu Hunter's also on Switch. I assume censored. Well, I, don't know yeah. if it, I don't know if there's nudity in the Steam version. Disgusting. Yeah. Oh, cool. Jews are trending on Twitter. <laughs> well, Mel Brooks was trending, and I thought that meant he was dead. <laughs> Oh, no, were people just mad that he made a movie? No, it's just his birthday. It's his birthday. That's all. It's, oh. it's, it's wholesome. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Uh, I also watched uh, Doom Patrol, the first couple oh, episodes. Why does that sound so familiar? Fuck. Doom Patrol is the... It's when Brendan Fraser is a big robot man. Okay. It's a DC show. I like it. It's good. It's on HBO Max. That's how I'm able to watch it. But I had considered getting that DC streaming service just so I could watch it, but it wasn't available. You can't get that on PS4, right? And that was funny because I was looking. It, I was looking into that a couple of days before HBO Max like was available. I saw, yeah. so, but I finally got around to it, and I like it. It's it, it's got a it's got like a it's got a good sense of humor about like the narrator is also the bad guy. So he narrates the, sh and he's also like, he can break the fourth wall, which I always like. So like, he's narrating these episodes and then will tell you like, man, these guys really suck. You know, it's just, it's just funny. And then the narrator bad guy is the, I don't know. Did you ever watch Firefly? He's the yeah. pilot. Oh, um, Alan Tudyk. Is that isn't, yeah, I don't know. That sounds right. And Brandon Fraser is great in it. And, and, and uh, I didn't know that Cyborg was in the show. He just showed up in the second episode. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Alan Tudyk is also King Candy from wreck and Ralph. Oh, he's got a great voice. He, he, he plays the villain in like a bunch of the newer Disney movies. Alan Tudyk is King Candy. And he's also, well, it's not like the main villain, but he's like the Duke of Wesselton from fucking Frozen. <laughs> and he's also Duke of, he's also Duke of Weaseltown from Zootopia. And he's also, um, is he what, so he's not he's not the villain but he's one of the like he's he's the red herring bad guy in big hero six but oh shush i haven't seen that movie yet oh well you're not gonna know who his fucking voice is yeah well i know everyone's voice i'm always yeah. correct big hero six is good you should watch it by now it was cool watching clone wars because uh uh oh, fuck now i can't remember his name i'm bad with names i'm good with voices and faces uh <laughs> the guy who plays uh, qui-gon jinn it was actually the, the same actor voiced him too Liam Neeson? Yeah, Liam Neeson voiced okay. his character in the show. Yeah, I mean he was only in a, he was only in like two episodes, but it was right. cool. Yeah, I was like, oh fuck, that sounds that man. That, sound, that really sounds like him. I can't. That can't be him though. I looked up. I was like, oh wow. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm Jin, because um, he's too busy Jin. drinking. Uh, did I tell you that I finished that show? What Star Trek? No, 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 Clone Wars. <laughs> oh no, no, I think you did last time. Oh okay. I can't remember. Well, the, someone said Clone Wars that I was talking to. I don't know if it was you. Well, in case if I haven't, I'll just talk about it shortly. Short, I mean, in short, that uh, the last, the newest season, which is the last season, uh, the the first four episodes are great. The middle four episodes were not good, and then the last four episodes are better than all three uh, new movies. All sorry, all five of the new movies. <laughs> so I was like, why don't they just get this guy to write the movies? <laughs> and apparently they might. So is it uh, Oski or is it someone else? No, it's um, Filoni. The guy who who's also helped. Well, I mean, he's one of the writers and directors on um, Mandalorian. Okay. Now the, the the plots for these newest episodes had been written or at least first drafted back in 2010. So I was Are curious they? about that because the the middle four episodes weren't good just because the two main the two characters that were involved these new characters were really annoying. They were a sister. They were two sisters, and they were just always arguing and and the the. the, the there felt there seemed to be more uh, injected comedy, like bad comedy, like in the movies. 
So I was like, what is going on in this? Like, are these new? But no, they'd been written a while ago. But I'm sure, you know, through different drafts and how they were written, probably finished this year. Yeah. They weren't as good. Those four episodes, I mean. Th- those four episodes are still fine. They are just they just annoyed me, so I didn't enjoy them that much. I, I, right. I texted Jake and I said, yeah, I'm not going to ruin anything for you, but like first four ep- and and. The first four, second four, and third four epi- those those groups of episodes are like one story. So it's like you're getting three new movies. Oh, cool! Yeah, it's cool. But like the the first four episodes are about a group of clone troopers that were a that were that came out wrong, but they had uh, but they had certain uh, abilities that were that were um, uh, beneficial to the cause. So they they formed their own ragtag ragtag group called the bad batch so you got like one clone who's like just huge and jacked and he's strong as shit and then you got this other one who's like basically rambo you got another guy who's like an ace sniper and then another one who's um like a computer genius and there was this there was like four episodes revolving those guys the second the, the other group was a, a ahsoka she wasn't in the in the the second to last season she wasn't in it at all and i didn't realize that until after i was finished with it but like the season before that she gets she gets framed, and the the Jedi Council doesn't trust her anymore. And then when she finally clears her name, they're like, "Oh, I guess we can let you back in the Jedi Council." And she's like, "Nah," and she leaves. So she isn't in the next season at all. And then this, then she finally shows up in this newest season where she's like trying to hide out, but her her bike, she crashes her bike because it's shit, and she crashes it onto a platform with a mechanic. This mechanic has a sister who always who's always getting into trouble trying to make money. And they, they end up, you know, going on an adventure, but it's fucking gay. And then the next four episodes are finishing it up and tying it into the prequels. Right. It's like tying up all this, the loose ends and shit from the other. Apparently, they had, this show had been planned for multiple more seasons, but it got canceled. There's no, real, there's no real reason out there for why it got canceled. Some people say it's because it was getting too dark for Cartoon Network, which, I mean, <laughs> the, show gets, the show gets really dark. I mean, people are murdered in that episode. People are murdered in every episode, like straight up laser bolted through the brain. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's good. It, it got really good. I, I'm sure I said this on the show before, but I highly recommend it because the first two seasons are kind of a drag. Well, because it's like, they're just trying to get their footing. But man, after that, it gets really good. So I was, I was on drunk duck for a second, mm-hmm. checking my comments on my comic and uh, on the random thing one of the comics that recommended me was uh, NHL 08 Manual. Cool. And it's one page, and it's just about winning a face-off when the ref drops the puck. Oh, excellent. Oh, I, I just realized I didn't talk about Doom Patrol at all. Well, I did, but I didn't. Well, I mean, like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, only two epi- I'm only two episodes in, but, like, everybody is doing a great job in the show. I, I really like the characters. The only character I don't like, but there's, like, she just she just starts off really annoying because she has she literally has sixty four personalities with each their own powers. But, oh, good. But each of those characters is a cunt, so it just wasn't fun to be you know ha- be around her in the show. But she's starting to they're starting to delve in a little bit more in the second season, the second episode of like you know what's her deal. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm starting to actually at least I, I'm more interested in her character than just straight up just not thinking she was very interesting. I've been watching a lot of. Um... VTubers like just translated like Trans- transsexual VTubers. Yeah, and I'm I'm just getting fully scorched earth on like Western women, not <laughs> just characters in media, but I mean like Western women in general. Where it's like, why can't you just be like these Japanese chicks that are nice? Like, They're, why can't it's you... all fake? <laughs> what? It's all fake. They're not nice. All women. Are, I don't all women care. are bad. <laughs> Aesthetically pleasing to look and listen to. Aweb. Yeah, yeah, fucking! I will send you clips of Inugami Kor- Korone. Look, no, I believe me. I'm sure I would love her, but I'm sure I'm gonna simp for her. But I... <laughs> fellas, who are we simping? Well, because uh, there's there's a great compilation of her playing through Doom sixty four, and then like her reading the the ending uh, paragraph in like complete English. <laughs> the mother of all demons is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Look, at least Western women are, you know, up front. They want you to, they want you to pay them, pay piggy. No, not that shit. I mean, like the Western women that are like, "Don't look at me." It's just like, uh, okay, God, I'm fine. The, when they when they have their tits splayed out for all to see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of women that are aesthetically, speaking of women characters that are aesthetically pleasing, I've been playing the first Shantae, and I love it. Mm. 
Wait, the the, the one on Game Boy Game Advance? Boy. I couldn't... A color, yeah. I couldn't figure that out. I just couldn't it's get a little color, yeah. but it's actually pretty would you good. Say it's, would you say it's McClunky? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> McClunky. Um... <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I, I, I'm playing Shantae, and she uses her hair to hit the McClunky. No, it's <laughs> it's actually pretty good for a Game Boy Color game. Like, there's a lot of good Metroidvania elements in there that I'm kind of shocked. Like, I, I know that game was made in, like, 2008 or whatever, but fucking... <laughs> like, it, it's well done. No, and it's it gotta be earlier than to play the other ones. It's gotta be way earlier than 2008. No, it was made in 2001. Yeah, okay, yeah. I, was I, think, I think it did come out after the Game Boy Advance was out. But you know, it was it was a Game Boy Color game post Game Boy Advance launch, and they made four copies of it. So that's why it was rare for a while until they put it on the eShop yeah. virtual console. Two thousand two. Yeah, I like it though. It makes me really excited to play the other ones. Well, now there's like what five of them? There are five. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I started I started playing the series because one of the new clan boys, Zach, was playing Seven Sirens, the newest one. Yeah. And he was saying how he really liked it, and I'm like, God, I should be playing those games because it's about a brown a brown skinned girl with purple hair so that's right up my fucking alley yeah risky's revenge uh shantae and, and the pirate's and curse and uh, the half hero, hero and, and yeah are they all oh, good? Uh, supposedly yeah i, I mean never got into one, your mileage may vary because it's kind of it's, it's kind of clunky like it's kind of mcclunky you have to hold the attack button and watch her go through her attack animation before you can run it's strange because it's like i love way forward or I did. Yeah, I mean, this definitely feels like a way forward game, like before they kind of hit their stride. And Jake Kaufman but, did the music, so you know that's yeah. good. Like you get a new transformation every. Uh, like there's like four main dungeons, and in each one you get a new transformation that lets you get to new areas you couldn't before. Like first is a monkey that lets you wall jump, and then you get an elephant that lets you break through shit, and then you get a spider that lets you crawl on like <sighs> walls. Yeah, it's cool. No, no, no. I was just like, why is this copy of Shantae ten thousand dollars, brand new, lowest price? Because it's <laughs> it's sealed. But yeah. Still, I mean, Jesus. Well, it's a rare ass game. I know, what? but Jesus. Also weird that Capcom published the first one. Yeah. I never like, knew that's that. The thing that. People don't seem to remember, but yeah, Capcom totally. And also, this is a game I probably would have fucking loved as a kid if my mom had just randomly picked it up at like Sam's Club. Or oh, some totally. Because then I wouldn't have noticed that it was so McClunky. Well, yeah, but like, really, it's yeah. Now you can get it for going back to the first one just to see the history and kind of I have see it uh, uh, on the 3ds. I mean, I did buy it. That's what I'm playing it on. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, now you can get the game. You can get the, the cart loose for less than fifteen bucks. That's good. Um, but yeah, I like it. I'm, I'm not done with it yet. But once I do that, I'll probably. I was hoping pirate or um, I was hoping Risky's Revenge would be on the Steam sale, but it's not. Mm. But I guess it's still like only ten dollars. So who gives a fuck? Oh, and I already own Pirates Curse, and then I'll just pick up uh, Half Genie Hero and Seven Sirens on the Switch when I get to those. Mm. I don't like the art style of Half Genie Hero as much because it's like this weird flash animated style. I like the art style of the character portraits for Shantae and the Pirates Curse because they're like basically anime. Yeah. But there is that giant bo mermaid boss fight in Half Genie Hero. Yes. It's like a giant mermaid in chains and I'm like, ooh, yes, come <sighs> to daddy. Step on me, mommy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Other than that, I've just... Oh, I, I got the Yu-Gi-Oh! game for Switch because I was kind of hankering for some Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, my friend was thinking, was talking about and it was on sale, to get that. So. Yeah. It's kind of shitty. Of course like, You can tell it's, it's kind of low budget, but I don't know. It's kind of fun playing Yu-Gi-Oh! again. It's kind of fun just going through the duels and talking to the guys online and just being like, Sword Arm of Dragon, Black Lust the Soldier, Kunai with Chain. You can't say that. <laughs> I, i'm not from brooklyn i can't do that um and uh, i was also watching that game champ guy who does those can you beat splatoon without shooting your main gun or whatever he he has a series where he goes through the changes for the four kids version of you -Oh! can you episode. play splatoon without blowing your load yeah um he's, he's been doing these episodes where he goes through every episode of Yu-Gi-Oh and like does the differences between the japanese version and the four kids version and it, i fucking almost choked on my coffee this morning because he was talking about one of the Weevil Underwood episodes, and he was just like, 
he he like did an impression where he's just like you destroyed my beautiful bugs i'm gonna play a trap card in defense mode <laughs> something so nonsensical and stupid I oh it. i fucking love that show yeah we talked about it before i mean it's just uh it's just I a masterpiece it. well because he's going through and he's just being like he's just being like uh you know, in the Japanese version, they they explain this rule that's very important to the duel. But in the English version, Yugi does this instead. <laughs> <laughs> they just and made yeah, the it up as they went whole, along. They did not give a fuck. And, yeah, and the whole time I'm fucking the whole time I'm going through the Duelist Kingdom duels in the game because they they set up like the, your decks to basically be the same thing as it would be in the show. Oh yeah. So I'm just going through and I'm just like, damn, I wish I could use my catapult turtle to launch my fucking Curse of Dragon at the Castle of Illusions flotation ring, bringing it down on everyone's fucking monsters and killing them instantly. Yeah, but that's not a real thing you could do. Yeah. Damn, oh. I, damn, damn, I wish I had my I damn. I fucking want to find that video. <laughs> it's, never, it's, it's gone, man. It's gone. Yeah. It makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. I actually do have way too many Switch games that I bought and haven't played yet. Like, I bought Okami HD so I can finally play that fucking 80-hour game. Oh, God. Uh, going, through, going through Xenoblade Chronicles, which is another 80-hour game. Uh, I bought Kentucky Route Zero the day it came out, and I haven't touched it yet. Because I actually I really want to play through that. Cause, like, it looks used cool. To, like, Kaufman used to tell me that game was fucking amazing, and that was back when it wasn't even done. Yeah. And now that it is, I'm like, I should fucking play this. Um, I'm just yeah. glad I'm getting through the fucking Yakuza games because, man, I have so... I mean, I'm in the same boat. I've got so many fucking games that I'm never going to oh, finish. I finally bought a game from Limited Run. I bought Outer Wilds because I heard that game is fucking incredible. I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, so Outer Wilds is an indie game that came out around the same time as The Outer Worlds, which is that Fallout game that isn't Fallout. Oh, no. Yeah, but The Outer Wilds is like a weird space exploration game, I guess kind of like No Man's Sky, but not really. Hmm. People say it's fucking amazing, so I bought it sight unseen from Limited Run because they were just like, surprise, we're making Outer Wilds physical, and I'm like, okay, I don't have this game yet, and people have been sucking this game's dick since last year, so I'm going to buy it. I don't know when the hell I'm going to get that Streets of Rage uh, box, um, limit, uh, physical box. But, uh, Did you play Streets of Rage 4 yet, or are you waiting for that to come in? I was going to, and then my my, my good buddy uh, uh, Joseph, just he straight up just bought it for me on PC so I could play it. Oh, so we good. could play it together. So I have played it. I love it. but That's good. I would be I playing should... it a lot more if I had it on the Switch, to be honest. I should really get that. Lizard Cube does good shit. <sighs> It is really good. I, I love that Wonder Boy remake. Uh, Streets of Rage 4 looks fucking tight, and I'm really excited for Windjammers 2. <laughs> did I... Have I not talked about Streets of Rage 4 on here? I don't know if you did. I had honestly. to have. But, I mean, basically, what I like about it is... Uh, I still like Streets of Rage 2 more. On, on, not more, but it's just... I'm so used to playing that game that I'm just... I'm so kick-ass at it that I, I just feel, you know... Uh, invincible when I play that game, yeah. but like in this game, it's new, and care uh, uh, enemies have like invincibility frames, so that that like fucks me up, and I'm not used to it yet. Yeah, yeah. But but what's cool about it is that you can play as like you can play as the the new versions of the characters, but as you play, you unlock the old versions of the characters. So I can I can actually play as Streets of Rage Two Axel. With his actual oh, cool. move set in the new games, and I can get pretty oh, far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, nice. Burning was it? Uh, what does he say? I think it's actually Burning Fist or something. Or uh, uh, oh no no no, um, Grand Upper. That's what he's saying. Okay, Grand Upper. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I just remember when you guys were doing the let's play of that, and that's just the only thing you would do the entire game. Oh yeah, because <laughs> I'm an asshole. And you were mad because apparently, like Alex left the the cap on the camera or something. <laughs> I don't remember. Well, I, had, I, I got video of you being mad about it <laughs> and then put it in the one of the Boston Fig videos and you like turn to the camera after you're yelling at him and you're like, I'm going to fuck you in the mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. I was, just, I, was so know, ang- I was so angry back then. I'm so, I'm yeah, so chill now. So loft. Yeah. Mm. I told you about the Ween song that's about Zoloft, right? <laughs> I don't know. That sounds funny. Uh, I also I also listened to one of their live albums, the live in Toronto one. That album's fucking rules. 
like the third the third song in is a song about living in new hope pennsylvania and pumping gas and they just drop the f slur and it's just fucking great and then they, later in the show they get drunk and do a cover of piano man where they're mixing up the verses <laughs> and then, and then he, yeah it's like uh the usual crowd shuffles in and they look at my jar and put bread in my jar but it's better than drinking alone <laughs> it's just like, and then when I get to the chorus, he's like, sing us a song, you know, the piano man. Put some coke on my dick tonight. And then he can't get to the rest of the chorus because, like, the guy who's on drums just does a rim shot. <laughs> that, that live album is fucking incredible. Oh, my Absolutely. God. It yeah. does sound pretty funny. Dude, Ween is great. I'm, like, really getting into Ween now. I, I, I mean, when I tried, I only liked Ocean Man because it's such a meme. Well, that album itself is fucking weird. Oh, like the okay. Mollusk is a weird album. Like they're all weird, but like the Mollusk is weird. <laughs> there's a lot of like, there's not a lot of like songs on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but absolutely listen to that live in Toronto album. It's fucking hilarious. You gotta listen to the songs they're not playing. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. I was listening to some progressive jazz earlier, in the week, and that's why I did that tweet where it's like listening to a dude noodle to a, noodle on a detuned guitar with overlaid Halloween sounds. It's like, ah, uh, it's called the progressive jazz, you fucking faggot. <laughs> why Halloween noises? Because like, okay, I'm li- I was listening to an album by a guy called Square Pusher, <laughs> and some of the songs are just him noodling on a guitar with really creepy like synth sounds being oh, played over it. Okay, yeah, I used to I, I used to listen to it a bit back in college. I actually used like there was one song called Aqueduct that I would use in videos whenever I needed a really creepy like unsettling song. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. You, you you like the one song on that album called A Real Woman, where it's just like him with vocoder uh, vocals in the background being like, you are a member of society, do something, something, da, da, da. and then it gets to the chorus like, you are real, you exist, you have feelings, you are real. <laughs> it's just like, I think I've heard that. You might have, I don't know. But I don't know, I kind of like Square Pusher. <laughs> well, you like weird music. I do, I do, but th- that's also that's almost too weird for me. It's the same thing with Ween, where it's like the, a lot of their songs are great, but some of them are just like I can't, in good conscience, like this song on Spotify because it's just them with like a voice changer being like the poop ship destroyer. <laughs> yeah, because you're gonna be driving around, then it's gonna come on shuffle, and you're gonna drive your car to a ditch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Early like Corey's gonna be in the car. She's like, "What the fuck is this?" And I'm like, "I'm retarded." <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you I, I put on uh, uh, Xanadu is on uh, uh, for longtime listeners. <laughs> Xanadu came on H- is on HBO Max. So I was showing some of it to Christina, and nice. she and she goes, "Yeah, this is the kind of music you like." <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "It's ELO." <laughs> oh, ELO did the soundtrack for Xanadu. Yeah, I didn't know that. It's great, dude. The soundtrack to, to Xanadu is really good. It's the, like when I found out that Toto did the soundtrack for Dune. I know. And I'm like, what? There's like legit ELO music in in the movie. And like, I was watching it kind of like from fast forward. Like, the, yeah, the movie's gay. And I, it was funny. I, I never. I, I don't know. I watch Xanadu. That seems like a movie I could fuck with. I, I like it. I mean, you know, there's parts of it that I'd probably skip past now. But but the funny part is is that the main guy I I didn't realize it at the time but the main guy is the also the main guy in the Warriors. Oh no shit! Yeah, and I'm like, what the fuck? This is like the Talk only about t- a fucking genre shift. Yeah. Damn. I don't know. Uh, both movies are pretty gay. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the Warriors though. Oh, me yeah. too. Me too. Come on, that's that's a, a gay in a loving way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the '80s. Uh, how the '80s were very gay. I got, I got to play that Rockstar game. Ah, uh, you know, I, I had it, and I, I didn't really dig it, so I let my friend borrow it and just never asked for it back. It's such a weird fucking game to put out in, like, 2005. It like, is. Yeah, here's a fucking weird-ass 70s movie. We're making a game based on it's it. It's supposed to be good. I, I think Mike Smith said he liked it. I think it was Mike Smith who said that. Probably. I don't know. I just know there's, like, a PSP version of it, too. Oh. Yeah, seriously. Ugh. Um, Fucking Christ, what? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of weird, weird ass '80s, '70s movies I want to watch. Like, I want to watch Brazil at some point. Ah, uh, yeah, I've never seen that myself. I, I fuck with Terry Gilliam. Sure. Um, yeah. I don't think. 
Oh, uh, you know what I watched and I actually didn't enjoy it this time was uh, Princess Mononoke. Really? Yeah, I, I just think I think it's just it's it's just such a uh, the it's mess. Long. It's it's long, but like the message is just so like just be kind to nature. Like uh. yeah. It's like, but he also takes like a completely arbitrary stance at the end. He's just like, yeah, humans and nature should be able to coincide with each other. Yeah, I. You go, you go back. Tell your wolves, I'll come fuck you every Saturday. I'm gonna help them rebuild Iron Town. It was pretty cool that uh, J- uh what's her name? Gillian the- Anderson. Yeah, voices the wolf god. I was like, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, she she does a great job in that. I Keith I David is the happening. is the um boar, and that's awesome. Yeah, Keith David's the boar. Um, Which is bullshit because he's not a boar in real life. So I think he should step down from that role. My sisters always make fun of the one line he gives where he's like, why did he not save Nago? Nago was beautiful and strong. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I saw that in Japanese for the first time last year. And I don't know whether I like Jillian Anderson as the wolf god or whoever voices it in Japanese. Because in Japanese, it just sounds like an old man. But like just vaguely womanish enough, mm. but it's like extremely deeply voiced, which is like, oh, oh, oh yo, guy, wa no shima we no. and it's like, oh, dude, that sounds fucking rad. Mm. I can't believe I never saw that movie in Japanese until then. I just wonder if I would have liked it more in Japanese. I'm not really sure. I don't know. Um, Billy Bob Thornton's fun as the bad guy. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's not bad or nothing. I just didn't. Claire I just... Danes, uh, is Claire Danes Princess Mononoke right? Or uh, no, Claire Danes. She the she the Japanese lady. Yeah, who has like no real motive to be as evil as she is. Yeah, and then uh, uh, Billy Crudup, Doctor Manhattan himself is uh, yeah. Ashitaka. That surprised me when I looked it up. I was like, oh fuck, because I was like, man, this guy sounds like the guy from f- fucking Garzy's Wing when he's yelling. <laughs> and then, but then I was like, oh no, this isn't. But it- uh, I really <laughs> want to take a gif of the when he's trying to lift the the boar up so the wolf can get out from under it, and then like the the monk dudes are trying to shoot him with like poison darts yeah i want to take that clip and just put like me over ashitaka and then like 2020 over the boar he's trying to lift up and then the just journalists over the fucking <laughs> the dudes that are shooting poison darts and like all the other dudes just start beating the shit out of him with like rakes and shit that's a violent ass movie no it's very i mean every time he shoots an arrow he pops a guy's head off yeah seriously it's rad as fuck. It is. But... I, like the movie the movie looks beautiful. I just I found the I found the the message is really childish. It is, but I, I, I mean, assume it's for children. So I mean, I shouldn't complain. It kind of is, yeah. Yeah. I also hate that dear god. <laughs> oh, freaky. Christina hated it. Yeah, he was like, "Oh, it's so freaky looking." Yeah. Uh, and she didn't like it that much either. And I oh. was Jada Pinkett Smith is the fucking guy's wife. <laughs> yeah, she's funny, actually. She's cool. so black in that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's great. She's putting on the black scent for, like, this Japanese woman. It's funny. I know. I love it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, um, but it kind of ruined my momentum because I was like, I'm going to watch all the Ghibli movies, the Jiggly movies, because they're on HBO Max. And after I watched Princess Mononoke, the one that I always thought was my favorite, and I didn't like it that much, I was like, you know what? I'm just not going <laughs> to my favorite, although I'd probably say that, like, Spirited Away is probably a better movie. Mm-hmm. Um, just objectively. Well, just there's ones I haven't seen. I never saw that one. You never saw Spirit of the Way? No. Oh man, you got to get on that. That's a good movie. All right. Uh, what else? I've only seen um, Howl's Moving Castle and Porco Rosso along okay. with. Okay. Howl's, Howl's Moving Castle is like it's good until the end when everything just kind of resolves itself <laughs> really cleanly, and it's just like oh, the conflict just instantly disappeared from this movie. And I saw Parker Rosso like after Princess Mononoke, and that that movie just felt so boring to me after seeing that. I never saw Porco Rosso. Um, I can't even tell you much about it. This was, you know, I saw I this movie fifteen years ago. I didn't see Laputa Castle in the Sky until like a couple of years ago, and I liked it. Mark Hamill's the bad guy in the dub. Ha, nice. Uh, I, I believe the chick who plays uh, Suki and uh, Rogue in the X Men movies is the voice of the girl in the dub for Laputa. Mm. Castle oh, in the Sky. I saw that one with the little the girl who's a fish. Ponyo. Yeah. Ponyo's all right. It's very childish. Um, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, you could definitely tell. Like, oh, this is made for literal babies. Okay, cool. Which is and fine. Like, you- I can enjoy that. I think what I mean, what I meant when I said that the uh, Princess Mononoke is childish. It's, it's. I mean, it's like. 
like I I know that we shouldn't destroy nature and like yeah and like how they're doing and but people but like and you when you know this same year Australia was literally on fire so it's like this movie isn't fucking helping anybody you know? right <laughs> but um, I could watch a baby I could watch a movie made for babies like Ponyo that movie would make me feel good I'm sure Liam Neeson's the dad in Ponyo nice. Uh, yeah, you should really get on Spirited Away. That's like the one Ghibli movie that everyone says is like the best. Which I don't want to like. I want to like hype it up for you. Yeah. No, I know. I've seen it. I've seen parts of it on TV. I, you know. Yeah, uh, it's good. What about my nigga Totoro? <laughs> Did you see Kaz Van Der Paul's fucking uh, animated like recap of that? I don't know who that is. I guess you wouldn't find it funny if you haven't seen the original movie. But yeah, I've never yeah. seen it. Totoro's fine. That's another one that's made for like literal babies. But <laughs> it's it's cute. It, there's a reason it's so iconic. That's what I want. I just want stuff that's cute. Yeah, it's cute. You'll love the cat boss. Uh, have you ever? Have you not seen Kiki's Delivery Service either? No, I've never seen that either. That's got a talking cat. Mm. Yeah. I, the, the the best part is when they're like in a shop and he sees a mug with a black cat on. He's like, Kiki, look, it's me. <laughs> like that black guy watching the trailer for Spider Man. <laughs> oh, sh- oh shit! It's me. Dude, yeah. Oh my fucking god, I love that. I love that so much. He was just—he was so happy. Finally, black black representation in Spider Man. Yep. Even though that guy's like, isn't he like Dominican or something? Like he's not black. black. No. Uh. So I I don't know how canon into the Spider Verse is, but he's like half black, half Hispanic. Yeah. He's so, yeah. Okay. Did you see Spider Verse? Yeah, I loved it. Okay, I, I don't know. This seems like you're the kind of guy who's like, that movie was popular, so I fucking hate no, it. No, I'm not. Why do people think that? I've never been like that. Oh, excuse the fuck out of me. You I, do that all the time. No, I only... Look, the, I only do it with anime. Only. Uh, oh, uh, not video games? No. I love how we got through this whole episode without talking about The Last of Us 2. Thank Christ. Oh, fuck it. Who cares about that shit? But no, I, I, I do it with anime because... Because out of nowhere, a, 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 a female character will just blow up all over my feed. And I'm just like, well, I don't want to watch this. Oh, so you don't like Astolfo from Fate? N- uh, n- no, I, I I like her design. I'll never watch Fate. Ever. That's a boy. I don't give a shit. Oh, the pink-haired <laughs> one? Yes. Oh, yeah, I would fuck him. Hardcore. I thought you meant the blonde. The blonde with, like, the red bikini. No, Saber. Yeah, Saber. Or whatever, whatever fifty variants of saber exist in all the other fates. Yeah, oh god. Because she's um, like Goku. There has to be like a Goku in every Dragon Ball. Or like, what's what's the name of that show with the guy who has the Japanese imperialist uh, <laughs> earring and the guy with a pig for a head? Uh oh, Demon Slayer. Yeah, I'll never watch that ever. It's good. I don't care. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, if you want to say, if you want to say, oh, I'm not going to watch it because it's popular. I do that with anime, definitely. That's why I'm so glad, No, well, in a way, in a sense, I'm glad no one ever talked about... Uh, so that's why instead of watching Attack on Titan, you watched uh, Cabinary of the Iron Fortress? I did, and I didn't like Cabinary either. I watched the movie. Corey just put on the movie one night, and I watched it, and I was like, this is pretty great. That chick is cute. That ab girl, the the steam girl or whatever, she's... Yeah. Ooh, oof, oh, ooh. Yeah, go figure. I, you like the ab girl, and I like the demure, tiny, like, girl... I would like sharp- I would tongue bathe the fucking ab girl. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. Did you like your shirt in the new banner? I did. I did. I love I a salt. A- I love a salty I snack. Me. I love I love a salty snack, and I want to I want to lick her clean. Uh, himbo Hardies. Himbo Hardies. Um, what uh, what else? I'm trying to think of other shows. Or, I mean, I'm coming I'm coming around on uh, the one that had uh, his his the whatever the fuck the the, the brunette with the white and blue dress that had her boobs tied underneath the dress oh it's is it is it bad to pick up a girls in a dungeon yeah like i never really saw anybody talking about the show so much as just that character it's, i would see it's a lot. Or whatever her yeah name that's is, yeah. it yeah but i'll probably never see that either i'm just i'm glad no one ever talked about golda kamoi in a way i wish more people would see it but i'm glad that that shouldn't blow up because i probably would never watched it i mean it took me eight years to watch fucking kill uh sorry i watch uh the other one, Gurren Lagann. Yeah. And oh, I liked it. That's the other thing, too. The only show... Of, Sorry. Of 
Simone, Nia, uh, Kamina, and Yoko at a grocery store in like modern day, and it fucking killed me because it's like, <laughs> oh god, why not? Why? <laughs> the other show. I had to share. I had to share that meme recently where it's like president of the goddamn universe, homeless guy with no friends, dead virgin, dead virgin. <laughs> <laughs> what is that other show? Uh, the only show that got super popular and then I tried and I didn't like, I mean, I tried it after a while and then still didn't like it, was Attack on Titan. Fuck Attack on Titan. Yeah. But all these other shows are probably fine and I'd probably like them. I do want to watch that show with the pink haired girl with the bow. And there's that one ending where she's dancing. Oh, yeah. Where it's like he's trying to hook the guy and the girl up. I want to watch that. Oh, I also didn't like uh, Goblin Slayer. To be fair, that that show is pretty one note. Yeah. I just kind of liked it because people were mad at it. But also, like, it's just kind of fun because he just doesn't doesn't care about anything else. Yeah, but I mean, you know, five episodes in and you're bringing in all these characters and he still just does not care. Like, it, 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 that, that, that joke got old. I guess. I don't me. know. I kind of I liked it. Also, High Elf Archer for life. Oh, oh yes, yes, of course. That's the one. I think that's the one girl, girl character we both agree on. Well, you didn't like Shield Maiden or whatever, or or Sword Maiden, whatever her name is, Big Tatas. No, no, I like the elf chick. The elf chick's awesome. Oh, weird. I also, I also want to watch Konosuba at some point because I never really. I got like three episodes in and just stopped for some reason. Uh, remind me. I got to finish High School Girl. What's Konosuba again? Konosuba is the one where it's an isekai, but like they're all jerks. Like he gets transported to another world, and the goddess is like, "Okay, well, you have you have one wish before you go to this other world." And he's like, "Fine, I'm bringing you with me." <laughs> and then there's the there's a little lolly with the red uh, witch hat. Oh god damn it! Yes, yes, yes. I want to see that too. I always forget. It's funny. I, the first three episodes I watched, I liked. I just kind of fell off somewhere. I'm really trying to stick with stuff, or just get rid yeah. of it entirely. Because like that's why I'm watching Eat Man. And I'm like, okay, it's 12 episodes. It's it's the exact when I when I showed Christina the first episode, she was like, well, yeah, this looks like a show you'd like. Just, oh, and I never, I never finished watching uh, Interspecies Reviewers. I gotta finish that. Yeah, there's another show I'll never watch. <laughs> why because it was popular yeah no because it's just i don't know it's just whenever shows like this get popular it's just because people are horny but it's a good horny show you should still I watch don't it care no you'd like it <sighs> i can tell you for a fact you'd probably like it just give it two years and then go and go and watch it and you'll uh, be like dude have you heard of interspecies reviewers hey at least i don't do that i remember that things are popular <laughs> have you heard I, sw- I, sw- I don't have the autistic memory of my own show to remember a time that you've done that, but there's definitely been a time where you've been like, I hate this thing because it's popular. And two, two years later, you've been like, dude, have you heard of this thing I hated two years ago? Oh, well, yeah, I'm sure I've said that. I, I, that sounds more like something I'd say. I would say, I'm sure I would actually say, do you remember this and I hated it? Well, now I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, have you heard of Game Grumps? <laughs> Well, that's funny. What's funny? But I did like them for a little while, and now I hate them even more than ever. I gotta, I gotta play the, um, I gotta play the the patch they put in House Party with them in it. <laughs> God, they they weaseled their fucking way into like so many indie games. It's I can gross. understand them being in House Party because they did a really funny let's play of it. That that doesn't shock me. And like the the developers of House Party are fucking shitlords, so of course they'll be like, yeah, fuck it, we'll put you in the game. Who cares? But like, but like them and H three H three and uh, Jim H3, Sterling. And like A, I don't understand. Jim Sterling, I don't know what game he's been in where he wasn't being directly made fun of. Mm. There was like some game that I think Vinny played on like a trash stream where people just sent him games and like it was an RPG maker game and there was very clearly. A, uh, a character in there who was supposed to be Jim Sterling and he was obsessed with dildos. <laughs> well, no, like people, know. apparently the majority, um, the majority at large do not like Jim Sterling anymore. Well, yeah, cause he sucks and he sucked since like 2014. Well, I know. I mean, I actually forgot his name for a while. I'm only bringing him up now because you're talking about shitheads. And that happened to me with the chick who did in the net. I forgot what her name was for a second. And I was like, thank Christ, I don't remember what her name is. And then the next day I was like, Hannah Gatsby. God damn it. <laughs> Who's in the net? Then uh, it was a Netflix comedy special where this Australian dyke talked about how she was raped. Oh, so was, right. But yeah, you know, a, comedy. She came out with a new special recently where she was basically saying like, oh, I wish I'd gotten raped more often because I'm out of material yeah, now. Yeah, I know. I saw that clip because it just auto-played on Netflix. I'm like, what a cunt. Yep. 
And she said, by the way, she said she was quitting comedy after Nanette. Yeah, so good well, to hey. fix the real principles. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, you know, they always do. I'm uh, quitting comedy because I don't plan on getting riped again. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I used to hate the world. <laughs> be, wouldn't it be great though if that first comedy special was like a like a Andy um, Andy Kaufman esque fucking thing, and then like that? So her second comedy was like I made it all up. <laughs> she like, should even have like, an accent. Like Legion Skang said when they announced the second special, they were been like she should have just gone full dropping hard R N bombs in this one. That would have been funny. Uh, yeah, dude. Whatever. Yo, Skrill, <laughs> drop that R. <laughs> it's thing where like it, it, you see the two Rotten Tomatoes scores, and it's just like. Uh, a critic score of Nanette is like 100% audience score is zero and then like <laughs> critic score for Chappelle's new special is zero and the audience score is 100 <laughs> yeah wait why oh because because Chappelle doesn't play their fucking game that's why yeah, exactly. yeah. I was about to ask why where he, where, he, where he calls the LGBTQ community the alphabet people <laughs> <laughs> I think we should start calling them the PC master race but that's just me he <laughs> He's uh, I didn't watch a lot of his his newest newest special, which is just him talking. It's not it's not even a show. It's just him up there talking about like Black Lives Matter stuff, and and it's just like he's the only one. Oh, I was like, what are you talking about? That's what stand up is. <laughs> no, no, I I know, I know. Yeah, it didn't make any sense, but uh, but like I, I, I watched I watched a small clip of it, and he's just you know the stuff he's he's like the only guy that I don't get mad about when he voices his political opinions, just because he irrational <laughs> he's he's rational and when he did his show he made fun of fucking everybody and and he left it because he didn't like where he didn't like hollywood when where it was trying to take him yeah you know, he's he's the only one who has any kind of, it seems to be the only one who has any kind of integrity now again i don't want to speak too highly of the guy because i'm sure he's also a faggot <laughs> <laughs> but like he's one of the last holdouts for me that like not everyone's bad because like it's him and tom hanks the last yeah. two, because I don't even like Arnold Schwarzenegger anymore. God, anymore. Patrice O'Neill died too early, or maybe he died right on time, because maybe he would have ended up being a faggot. He wasn't funny though. <laughs> no, yeah, fuck you. He was funny. No, he was. I've seen. I don't know. He just sounds like an asshole. Well, yeah, that he's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like Patrice. I, 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 there's, I'm there's sure there's he was that funny. Leg- there's that legendary thing on like Opie and Anthony where Patrice and Louis C.K. are talking about like the the origins of slurs. And Patrice is talking about like the origin of kike. And he's talking about how like, oh yeah, because they said kike was the word for circle, so they just shortened it. And then Louis C.K. is like, oh, you heard about the origin of the word nigger? Yeah, some guy was being a real nigger. <laughs> God damn. Uh, was that you? T- no, never mind. No, I, I, I were talking about Christina and I were talking about Jimmy Kimmel. Oh God, yeah. I don't even know. I don't even want to hear about it. No, nah, it's fine. You know, there's nothing to say. It's just funny. He's just a schmuck. People were trying to cancel him, I guess. Well, you know. Whatever. Yeah, it's, it's whatever. Maybe he deserves it. They all deserve it. If you play by their fucking game, if they decide to cancel you, you fucking deserve it. Yeah. Anyway, don't cancel us. I, I love that guy on Twitter who draws uh, Back to the Future scenes as uh, like Don Bluth animal characters. Oh, I thought you were going to say as women because I've seen that too. <laughs> no. Hey, how about gender swap me, huh? <laughs> Is that the banner? <laughs> no. Unless you want China to have your face. Uh, China, wait, I don't remember what we said the banner was going to be. Uh, I thought it was going to be that meme where it's like uh, friendship with blue balls ended. Cummy Aches is my new best friend. I mean, that was funny in the very beginning of the show, but now that we've actually talked about stuff, we should probably make a banner that's... For, I mean, definitely definitely, the, and the name of the episode has so to be... So it's a statue of me sucking your dick and people were trying to take it down. No. That, is, that has nothing to do with what we talked about either. Let's end the show, then let's go over the fucking... Okay. Yeah, because it's been two hours. I can only stand so much of you. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah! <laughs> Did I tell you someone else bought my cum shield mask? Nice! Yeah, I've sold two of them. Oh, sweet. Are you making sure your donations go to uh, people who have been incarcerated for protesting? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, Black Lives Matter was started by a Jewish person, so... Shut up! Is that true? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Like a white Jewish woman. Oh, my God. That really explains a lot. Yep. 
what it explains i don't know but it explains a lot it speaks yeah. volumes it yeah uh, if a picture was worth a thousand noses well, that's why that's why like every time someone talks about neil Druckmann and people are like why 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 are people talking about neil Druckmann or whatever and then people just comment early life because if you go on their fucking wikipedia <laughs> you click on early life and you see where they were born oh it starts with an i <laughs> oh no every single time uh <laughs> Uh, show notes, home improvement, locking yourself out of the house, Mortal Kombat Legends, Scorpion's Revenge, voice acting and race, statues bad, cummy aches, eat man, ring fit adventure, Yakuza 3, steam summer sale, the clone wars, Shantae, studio Ghibli and stand-up comedy. Well, I guess we, I guess we can go with the statue one. So it's just a statue of me sucking your dick. Well, that doesn't have to be it, but it, it could be, uh, it'd be us making out. <laughs> Uh, it's with huge balls. <laughs> no, it's us with our with our boots to a black guy. Oh God! No, no, no I'm kidding. I'm kidding. God. Oh, it could be. It could. It could be a statue of you with Shantae in chains in front of you. Yes. <laughs> or I'm dressed as Shantae. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Okay, so banner is uh, <laughs> people tearing down. <laughs> of Mitch holding Matt as Shantae in chains. <laughs> what are they going to be spray painting on the on the base of the... Because you always got to spray paint something. Yeah. Like um, uh, <laughs> I thought of a different one for ACAB. It was uh, all cocks are beautiful. But... Uh, oh, shit. What should, what should it be? Black voicing. Or white voicing, I don't know. No. That's what Bob said that people are going to start saying soon. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Which is great. <laughs> he should just spray paint Bob was here on it. See if he gets it. Uh, what, if so, what, if, what if someone spray paints on it? I don't like this because it's popular. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I remember what I was going to say about Eat Man. I said a lot of the, you know, a lot of the episodes are basically, what if there was two guys on the moon and one killed the other guy with a rock? Would that be fucked up or what? <laughs> what? That's basically, that's basically some of the episodes. So if you don't like that kind of Japaneseiness, then you won't like it. Yeah. Uh... I don't know. I mean, the episode title is called Cummy Aches for sure. Or it's either that or Friendship Ended with Cummy Aches. <laughs> or with Blue Balls, Cummy Aches is my new best friend. Which, which is funnier, just the word Cummy Aches or that whole fucking... The whole phrase is funny because that's like the longest title we'd ever have, I think. <laughs> I mean, we could do that. I have no... Do it. Do it. I already have it written down. Um, Who should be tearing us down? See, that's the real question. Or is it just like a bunch of silhouettes when you get bored? When you get uh, when it's the zero hour and you have to get the panel? Yeah, I really don't feel like drawing that many. Okay. Around, so. I guess you could just have no people, just have chains, and it's pulling the statue down. Well, yeah. A rope. It should be but rope because that's more I accurate. Silhouettes of people. Uh, what is the, what is the fucking, what are they spray paint? I mean, they don't have to be spray painting. Yeah, I can't think of anything funny ever. <laughs> Jesus. I can't hear the laughter. Just, the, yeah, I can't hear the laughter anymore. God, what a great title. <laughs> well, I got that from Jim Carrey in that Conan O'Brien uh, sketch. Oh, I totally forgot to mention on the show. Uh, Conan Exiles is free on the Epic Game Store on Thursday. Uh, too bad you, you have download. to get it off the Epic Game Store. I know, but it'll, it'll be free, so you should download that. No. And we, we can play. No. <laughs> we can get slaves together. Oh. It's going to be a good banner. <laughs> yes. Did you like the banner I put up? Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll put that episode up after we're done here. What? Try to make us look extra retarded. Yeah, you did. Because <laughs> I was explaining to Christina, I was like, yeah, his head is big because of all the COVID conspiracies. Oh, I thought it was because of my Lolicon shit. 
I don't remember. I don't remember either. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is stupid, but it's someone spray painting Lolly 316 on the fucking statue. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, what if someone's spray painting Race Trader on the base? No. <laughs> I like brown girls. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's too much. Uh, God, I'm like, I'm like getting lightheaded from being hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, then let's stop. Let's see so you can eat. Now, if I think of something funny to spray paint on the base, I'll do it. Okay. Like, if something happens within the next two weeks, because you know. <laughs> There's a high likelihood of something happening in the next two weeks. Oh, Jesus Christ. There's a hundred ten percent of something stupid happening in the next two no, weeks. No, but I mean like relating to that specifically. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh black actors, blackster, blackters. Just put it. <laughs> black should sound black. <laughs> yes. Oh no, that sounds so bad. If you spray, oh my god, because people think we're making that statement or something. Well, I'm trying to think of a way we can spin it where it would make sense. Like, black should fuck black or something. White should sound white. No. <laughs> I really, God, we really should have made. Yellow should sound yellow. We we really should have made the banner where we were burning down a Cracker Barrel and calling it Dead Cracker Storage. <laughs> I know we should have be one of the best ideas you've ever had. Did, did I push you out on that one? Is that what happened? Yes, you oh, did. Man. But like, I was game. <laughs> Dead cracker storage. That's so fucking good. I can't wait till Pulp Fiction gets taken off of everything. <laughs> no, they're just and, gonna censor it. And I guess, I guess, literally every Tarantino movie. They just leave all the feet scenes, and every movie will be like three <laughs> minutes long. Quentin Tarantino foot compilation. <laughs> Oh my god. I would be the episode title, but we already have an episode called Kingdom Hearts Foot Compilation. <laughs> I'm seeing if there's a Quentin Tarantino f a feet compilation video. Tarantino. I don't ask about Tarantino's name at all. Oh, there we go. This boy is so cute. Tarantino Foot Compilation. Oh, it changed it to feet. Every feet scene in filmography of Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> I mean, you could... <laughs> We could we could have them spray painting all cocks are blessed or whatever you said. All cocks are beautiful. All cocks are beautiful. Maybe I'll do that. How about uh? How about uh? uh, uh unshit my fart. <laughs> What's that from again? Unbreak my heart. Oh. Unbreak my heart. Unshit my fart. Say you wipe my cheeks. <laughs> Once upon a time, I was fallen. How about walk, <laughs> walk the dinosaur, but it's come the dinosaur. It's fuck the dinosaur. <laughs> fuck the dinosaur. <laughs> Once upon a time, I was I was farting some cum, but now I'm only. <laughs> Open the door, get on the floor. Everybody fuck a dinosaur. Nothing I can do. I'm totally pissing a fart. <laughs> ew, ew. Oh, God. It's like a wet spray. Oh, God, I hate it. Uh... <laughs> Have them spray painting that on the statue. Pissing a fart. Farting what was it that you were saying like a few weeks ago? It was like, were you saying something like that? I don't remember. <laughs> I say a lot of things. Yeah, me too. <laughs> same. <laughs> Someone should just be spray painting the word same. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, what's that new hot fucking millennial? Uh, that fucking uh, gen. Gen Z uh, joke now, the shoddy song. Shoddy. Shoddy like a melody. <laughs> <in my life. laughs> uh, someone spray painting on the statue. This is so sad. Alexa played Desposito 2. Oh, man. Alexa play replay by Sean King or whoever. <sighs> P.L. 
P L A Y S T A T I O N. Don't don't fuck me, cause I'm so close <laughs> to the end. <laughs> That's stupid. It's like a cubby. I, I some days I gotta wonder how I keep from going under. Pissing, uh, uh, sh- it's already pissing the night away. So what would be uh, like coming, pissing, shitting, uh, <laughs> pissing and shitting, they're coming, pissing and shitting. Ah, 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 fucking a dog. <laughs> 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 oh no, I'm fucking. <laughs>